Show on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. By Ram Truck. Ram 1500 is Motor Trend 2014 Truck of the Year and the first ever back-to-back -back champion. And by True Moo Ice Cream and Novelties, a truly good thing now in the freezer aisle. recent years, they've been two of the best teams in baseball, winning three of the past four American League pennants. They brought us a memorable 2011 ALCS and Miggy's three home run performance last May. Another home run for Miguel Cabrera. You may not want to mess with Texas, but Detroit never backs down. Driven toward left center field. That ball is going to get down. And we have another walk-off win for the Tigers on back-to-back -back games. Familiar foes face off once again tonight. Gearing up for one more duel deep in the heart of Texas. Welcome back deep in the heart of Texas at Globe Life Park in Arlington where the Tigers and the Rangers are getting set to tangle in the middle game of this three-game set here in Arlington. And now let's have a look at the Tigers batting order presented by your Southeast Michigan Ford dealers and leaving things off tonight for the Tigers. Rajai Davis in the one hole. Ian Kinsler coming back tonight after that homer last night. A couple of hits for Ian and three RBI in the Tigers' first win in this series followed by Cabrera, Martinez, and J.D. Martinez riding a 13-game hitting streak. Torrey Hunter back in the lineup after 10 days off. And Nick Castellanos as well follows Torrey. Brian Holiday will do the catching tonight. And then Eugenio Suarez will man shortstop for the Tigers in game two of this three-game set. And here's a look at Ron Washington trying to get his team even in the series in the middle game of three here in Arlington. He'll send Joe Saunders to the mound here tonight. And Ron certainly had to deal with a lot of injury issues with his starting staff and all over the field, actually. So he's hoping for better things than his team was able to provide in game one. And, of course, here tonight, joined in the booth by Rod Allen, Craig Monroe, back in his home state of Texas. And, Rod, let's start with you about a thought on tonight's game as the Rangers try to get even in this series. Well, Tigers have won five games in a row on this road trip. They are absolutely rolling right now, clicking on all cylinders. Starting pitching has been stellar. They've done a very nice job with runners in scoring position. They need to continue to keep their foot on that gas pedal uh, tonight against the Texas Rangers. Let's take a peek at the Texas Rangers starting defensive alignment. It is brought to you by Tim Horton. In the outfield, they have Choice. Uh, they have Martin, they have Reels. Up the middle, they have Andrews and Odor. They have Beltran and Pena on the corner. And the catcher behind the dish, Robinson Chirino, has an outstanding throwing arm. So we'll keep an eye on him this evening. And Joe Saunders takes the ball to the mound for the Rangers tonight. He's 0-3 so far this season. He's making just his third home start of the season. Made five starts since returning from the disabled list a little earlier in the year. And, Craig, I know that Joe Saunders is a guy that you've faced during your career. Tell us about what he features and what Tiger hitters might be looking for against him tonight. Well, Trump, he's a trap. He's a crafty lefty. He's a guy that's not going to overpower you, but what he's going to do is try to keep you off balance. He's going to come inside with a good 89, 90-mile-per-hour fastball, but he's going to try to keep you off balance, mostly away with a real good changeup to try and get you out on that front foot. Look for the Tigers tonight to use the big part of the field because that's where your money is. And American League hitters are hitting a league best 346 against Joe Saunders. So if the Tigers are patient tonight, they just might have an opportunity to get some good licks in off of this crafty left-hander. There's Brad Osmus looking for his sixth straight win. Seems like things have turned around for Osmus and his crew rod of late, obviously riding this five-game winning streak coming into tonight. What have you seen that Brad's been able to do to help steady the ship and keep things going and get things turned around lately? Well, his demeanor. Uh, he's kept an even keel, uh, and that's the biggest thing for a player. When you see your manager panic, you're going to panic as a team. And he did not panic when they went through that very rough stretch, just like he didn't get too high when they were 27 and 12. So I think Brad Osmus has done a wonderful job. I like to call him Captain Cool. He has been steady as they come, despite whatever has happened with the Tigers during that rough stretch that lasted three or four weeks there. And it seems they've come out of it now in good form and looking for their sixth straight win here tonight. And Joe Saunders is standing in the way of that. 
Time now for our predictions on tonight's Fox Sports Detroit Tigers player of the game as presented by McDonald's frozen strawberry lemonade only at McDonald's. And here are the picks tonight. I'm going with Anibal Sanchez, and why not? The guy is sizzling. Rod went with Brian Holiday. Rod, what was your thought there? Well, Brian Holiday went to college uh, nearby TCU. It's TCU night here. He's been sizzling hot every time he gets a chance uh, to play. He's been getting busy. I went with B. Holiday tonight. And, Craig, you went with Ian Kinsler, figuring that home cooking is going to continue to work for him throughout the series, I guess. You're absolutely right. He's hit 30 home runs in this ballpark. He's also sold 30 bases, not once, but twice. So I'm going with Ian Kinsler. And it looks like we're just about set for first pitch as Rajay Davis steps in. Joe Saunders to the hill for first pitch 709 and it looks like Saunders is ready to warm up with that left hand and let her fly for the first pitch of the ball game a little something going on in the Texas side of the diamond so Tom Saunders takes the opportunity to take a couple of warm-up pitches uh, what do you see down there Rod? anything nope we're ready for baseball Trev Seven oh nine p.m. First pitch here in Arlington of Game Two of Three between the Tigers and the Rangers, and Rajay Davis steps in, ready to get things going. First pitch sails behind, up to the backstop, and Saunders finds himself in a hole in the first pitch of the ball game. Rajay One Davis run. had a real good day yesterday. He had three hits. One of the reasons why he's back in there today, and that and the fact that he has a three oh eight career batting average against Joe Saunders. And that's going to get some gap action. Rajay rounds second, rounds first, headed to second. And there he goes for three. Slides in safely. The ball gets past Beltre at third. Saunders scoops it up, and Rajay leads things off with a triple for the Tigers, who have something going immediately against a guy looking for his first win of the season. Great. Definitely a, the right way to get this thing going. Great swing by Rajay Davis there. Gets that front foot down, stays inside the baseball, drives it to right center, gets himself a triple. Rob Boy, can he get out of the batter's box, and can he pick him up and put him down? Oh, he's low flying. That much we do know. And one thing about Rajay Davis, when the team was 27 and 12, he was right in the middle of everything that was going good for the Tigers at that time. He was hitting well above 300, and he was stealing a lot of bases, and it's no coincidence that they picked up five games in a row as Rajay Davis has picked it up again. Be interested to see how the Rangers treat Ian Kinsler tonight after his multi-hit, multi-RBI performance last night, and they thought he was maybe showboating a little bit. Let's see how they react as Saunders throws his first pitch to the former Ranger. And last time, look at the Bernstein advantage, and here are Ian Kinsler's number. Numbers against Joe Saunders in his career. Four home runs off of the lefty. That's the most versus any pitcher that Saunders has faced during his career. And he's ahead in the count right now against Joe. Two and zero. Oh, Saunders comes inside. Two and zero. Oh, good hitters count for Ian Kinsler here. Likes the ball on the middle, middle end. Uh, look for him to look for that pitch and try to get the bat head out and do some damage here and drive in Rajay Davis at third base. Three and a hole Saunders is in right now to Ian Kinsler and certainly Ian's going to take his time here and find a pitch he likes. He's looking to extend his hitting streak to five games. You know he loves hitting in this ballpark. Certainly going to play to his advantage as this series rolls on. Saunders walks him on four straight pitches. Now the Tigers have men on the corners. And here's Kinsler's night last night. Took Cody Lewis out of the yard in his first day. Be a little wave at his former teammates as he walked by. And Cody Lewis didn't like that. Said he was disappointed in the way that Ian performed last night, or at least that wave on the way by. I like uh, Ian Kinsler a lot. Obviously, he's a really good player, but uh, you could see why uh, Colby Lewis probably took offense to uh, the little wave to his former team after he did homer against him last night. How do players like to handle that on the field, Craig? Well, the game seems to police itself. Uh, so look for the Rangers. Who knows what they'll do? Uh, but again, you let the game dictate it, and the Rangers will take care of it if they felt like it was a problem. Mickey's in a little 0 for 6 stretch right now. He'll try and knock in a couple of RBIs right here. He's an RBI machine, so I like his chances. 
Foul ball, opposite field, deep, but foul. There's Kobe Lewis, last night starter for the Rangers. Not happy at all with what he saw from Ian Kinsler. They had a couple of words. Post game, Ian said it was friendly as far as his vantage point is concerned. Maybe Colby might not think so, given his post game comments, but we'll see how that plays itself out the rest of tonight. Right now, it's up to Miguel Cabrera to see what he can do in a whole 0 1 to Joe Saunders as the Tigers have runners on the corners. Ball high, even to count. In a situation like this, Craig, what do you think Miggy is trying to do up there right now against a guy he's seen before? Well, he's got first and third. This is a, a, a situational hitting where you got to look for a ball up. And your goal right now is to just to get the guy from third base in. So get you a fastball or get your ball up and just try to hit an easily ground ball to the middle of the infield or a fly ball to the outfield somewhere. Fly ball deep enough to score Davis and the Tigers will have themselves a one nothing lead as Miguel Cabrera knocks in his 62nd RBI of the season. And that's how you drive in a hundred right there guys and he does it every year because he takes the free ones. Man in third nobody out. Fly ball to right center. Miggy very unselfish. Uh, Miggy was trying to hit the ball to right field and he was trying to hit something deep enough to score Rajay Davis from third base. That's one of the things that separates him from most. A lot of guys in that particular situation, they would have gotten greedy. They would have been trying to drive the ball in the gap somewhere. Uh, but Miggy wanted to make sure he got his team on the board first. Now Victor Martinez will step in. Try his luck against Saunders with a man on first in the form of Ian Kinsley. Looks at the first pitch strike. Well, they're definitely not going to get any easy for Saunders right now. <laughs> Victor Martinez steps in, swinging a hot bat all season long. He's looking to do some damage, getting that bat head out, uh, which he's done all season long. He'll drive something in the gap. These aren't good matchups for Joe Saunders tonight. Uh, his stuff is down as far as the velocity is concerned from the Joe Saunders that we used to watch when he was pitching for the, the Angels out west. He used to be 94, 95 with a nice little cutter, nice breaking ball, nice changeup. Now the velocity has gone. He's trying to reinvent himself, but this is not the kind of lineup that you try to reinvent yourself against. One strike to Victor, one out. Kinsler on first. Saunders delivers. Ball low. He was a count at one and one. Tigers were busy on the base path last night. Jackson stole a base. Rajay Davis stole a base. Both guys also. Were thrown out by the catcher Robinson Torino. Who's got a pretty good arm back there, Roddy? Surprised the Tigers tried to press their luck that often and be as aggressive as they were on the base pass last night against him? No, nope, not at all, because that's something the Tigers have done all year. And they started in spring training under the leadership of Brad Ausmus. Uh, they said they were going to be an aggressive base running team, and that's exactly what they've been. Another ball low. Victor now ahead in the count. Two balls and a strike. Rod, you know what? I like that they're being aggressive too because it puts pressure on the defense. You have to make plays when you get when they have guys on bases that can go first or third, can steal a base, get in the score position. I think this is a much better team uh, in 2014. I think it gets guys going. They're not the youngest team in the league. There's some other teams that are younger, some guys that are more athletic, but I think it bodes well, as you mentioned, if they do run the bases, go first or third, score on the balls that they should score on. and. They're going to get thrown out. They've got thrown out quite a bit this year, but Brad Ausmus hasn't wavered. He continues to give guys the green light that we didn't even think would run this year. Saunders uses the count to Martinez at two and two. He looks in to take the signs. Victor going through his ritual. And you know he is clutch with two strikes on him. This is where it gets tough to get Victor Martinez out. Well, he simply won't try to do too much. He'll just try to put the barrel on. And he does barrel up. Foul down the third baseline. Ball trade gloves it. Gives it to a fan. In the stands. That kid's got to be happy. Yeah, Adrian Beltre. That guy's got 2,500 big league hits. He just gave me a baseball. <laughs> So Victor collects himself, ready to do it all again. It's 
Saunders trying to keep Kinsler close at second. He does run the base as well. He's a smart base runner, which is one of the things that makes him an asset as far as uh, the offense and the aggressiveness that the Tigers want to feature. Well, he'll definitely take an opportunity uh, if he gets a really good jump here, but you don't want to run here uh, to take the bat out of Victor Martinez hand. Here's a guy that doesn't never, I mean, rarely strikes out, puts a good at bat together all the time, and he does here, right here, in the gap. That one's deep. And off the wall, that'll score another run. Here comes Kinsler around to score. Choice hits the cutoff man, and Victor has himself an RBI double. The Tigers have themselves a two to nothing lead right here in the first inning as Victor Martinez comes through again. Victor Martinez has been locked in for about a calendar year. Uh, hit 361 second half of last year. Here's a hanging breaking ball up around the letters of Victor Martinez. Look how level the swing is, how level the shoulders are. The concentration with the eyes right on the barrel of the bat. And he hits his 19th double of the year. And the Tigers, uh, they're in business once again here tonight. Roger, you know the routine when you hang it. The boys in the middle are banging it. And that was nothing different there. Victor Martinez barrels another break hanging breaking ball and now he's got to face one of the hottest hitters in the game today and JD Martinez and JD comes through that one's deep in the gap and that'll score another run here comes Victor around to score JD's got himself another extra base hit and the Tigers are now up three to nothing not a good start for Joe Saunders Rod Joe Saunders doesn't have enough bags uh, enough tricks in his bag for the Tigers tonight everything is hanging the fastball is flat J.D. Martinez extends his hitting streak to 14 with another double. Can you get any hotter than J.D. Martinez is right now? I, I don't know if you can. And like again, let's not, let's hope it doesn't stop because what he's been able to do, uh, hitting behind Victor Martinez, has made this Tiger lineup so much better. Mike Maddox out for a quick talk with Joe Saunders. Guys inside the clubhouse are certainly liking it. Victor's liking that. Saunders in a big hole early on with just one out another man on second as JD Martinez continues his hot heating Now Torrey Hunter's back in the game and it's been a few games for Torrey How long does it take to knock the rust off in a situation like this for Torrey Craig? Well, not a veteran guy Torrey's one of those guys that he continues to harness his swing and work on it So I don't think he'll be well. He gets himself a good fastball out over the plate hammers it to center Just not enough it will be enough to advance J.D. to third, however. Story pushes a run over. Are you surprised, Rod, that he took a swing at the very first pitch he saw after having so much time off? Oh, no, not at all. Uh, Torrey's one of those guys that likes to hunt the fastball, and he got a fastball there from Saunders. And he put a good swing on it. Give uh, Martin some credit running it down in straightaway center field. Obviously, the Tigers have something on Saunders, uh, which tells them he's going to be around the plate early in the count because several guys have gone up there and swung it. Uh, early early pitches You like guys like that too Trev, right? You know that you like guys that are want to be around the plate So, you know when you get in the batter's box You can go up there and be aggressive and it looks like the Tigers are taking that approach tonight Nick Castellanos 0 for 5 last night. He's licking his chops right now wanting to get in on the act He'll take a ball on the first pitch. He sees from Joe Saunders Saunders delivers ball to to Nick, a very patient hitter, and he certainly come around at the plate, Rod. What have you seen that's allowed Nick to come to the plate with a little more confidence and a little more poise of late? Just maturing and slowing the game down. I think earlier in the season he was swinging a lot of breaking balls out of the strike zone, but uh, he has slowed himself down and slowed his swing down and spread out a little bit, getting better counts to hit in these days. Take strike one there and a big swing and a miss. The, the one thing I like about Nick Cassion is if you ever get it, you, you have the time, right? You've talked to him several times as well. He's a very confident hitter when he walks into that batter's box. And again, I think that's half the battle is believing that you belong in the big leagues and that you can have some success. And with a swing like that, it'll come to an end here for the Tigers in the first inning. As they put three on the board. Anibal Sanchez toes the rubber for the Tigers tonight. He'll do so with a three and another lead after one half inning here in Arlington. We'll be right back. More Tigers baseball here on Fox Sports Detroit.
about three hits off of Joe Saunders in the very first inning. Rajai Davis and company getting off to a good start against Joe Saunders. And here's a look at the Metro Detroit Chevy dealers batting order as the Texas Rangers are set to get in and take their licks against tonight's Tiger starter. Leonis Martin will lead things off, followed by Elvis Andrews and Shin Sung Chu, Adrian Beltre. Four hits last night, including career hit number 2,500 for the veteran third baseman. He'll be followed by Alex Rios. Former Tiger Carlos Pena back in the lineup for a second night. Michael Choice playing left field tonight. Robinson Chirino is doing the catching. And Rutnick Odor playing second for the Rangers tonight. Annabelle and Sanchez checks in with a 4 and 2 record brought to you by Family Heating and Cooling with a 2 3 3 ERA. The whip is under 159 strikeouts for Annabelle in the league, hitting 182 against him. And something that Annabelle doesn't get a lot of, and that's run support, but the Tigers have staked him to three runs here in the very first inning. He doesn't have a tremendous record against the Rangers here in Arlington, especially 0 for 2 with a 17.05 ERA in the starts here. So certainly he's looking to turn that around for himself and he's got the tools in his toolbox to do it here tonight as he faces off against Leonis Martin to get things started in the bottom half of the first. Martin did not start last night's game against the left hander Drew Smiley as we are starting to get accustomed to Drew Smiley when he tows the rubber for the Tigers. Most left handers simply get the night off. Count even to Martin as Sanchez delivers his first third pitch of the night. Drops down a button. It's a pretty good one. Sanchez picks it up. Flips to Miggy for the out. One away in the Rangers' half of the first. Anibal Sanchez fielding his position, guys. It's it's a it's a beautiful thing with a pitcher on the mound that can field his position, make plays. It's like having an extra infielder in the infield. Nice concentration there by Anibal Sanchez as he reached down to grab that ball with the bare hand and also shuffled it underneath to Miguel. And Miguel cheated just the hair of coming off the bag because Martin can really run. Something's wrong with Miggy down at first base as well. Elvis Andrews steps in. He was one for four last night. Takes strike one from Sanchez in his first A-B tonight. Again, in case you missed it off the top of the show, Mario and Pemba ill tonight. Trevor Thompson in to do the play-by-play -play alongside Rod Allen and Craig Monroe here in Arlington, Texas for game two of three between the Tigers and the Rangers. Count all even at one ball, one strike with one out. Ball two to Andrews. Sanchez falls behind three and one to the Rangers shortstop. Well, you know it. Anibal won't give in here. Little hasty out of the box. That's a second strike to him. Runs the count full. Nice located fastball down the way. Staying out of the middle of the plate, even in a 3 1 hitter's count. He commands the fastball as well as any right hander in the American League. Line shot back up the middle. Rajay Davis plays with a little basket catch. Two away for Sanchez here in the bottom of the first. Let's take a peek at the uh, Tigers defensive alignment. Davis getting the start in the center field uh, tonight. Austin Jackson, not real good numbers against Joe Saunders. So uh, he has started this one on the bench. Rajay Davis, 51 starts in center field already this year. Only three in center field. Torrey Hunter also back in the lineup here tonight. You know, Torrey was chopping at the, bit, at the bit to get back into the action. That's for sure. Torrey's a pro, though, because he knew what was going on over the weekend while the team was in Cleveland. He was ready to play in Cleveland, but J.D. Martinez was going off. Austin Jackson was playing good baseball, as was Rajay Davis. So, Torrey Hunter simply went to the manager, Brad Austin, and said, I'll wait my turn. Being the professional that he is. That's what veterans do. Unselfish player. 
wants to win. Strike to tune. Another aspect of having Hunter back is the added depth. When you've got JD Martinez playing like that, and you've got these kind of options, and your team is that much deeper, obviously you're going to be that much better uh, at this Mar point in the season. JD Martinez most definitely has length in the Tigers uh, offense. One and two pitch to Chew. Swung on and missed, and that'll end the Rangers half of the first. Sanchez, very efficient. Three nothing lead as we head to the second. We're coming right back to Arlington after this. Carrying up the scorecard to home plate pregame. Now, there's a little something to this because this is the sixth straight game that Job has done now. What does that mean? Well, it means for the last five games that he did it, the Tigers got a win and they're up 3 0 early in this one. So maybe there's a little something to that as Brian Holly fouls off the first pitch he sees tonight to fall in an 0 1 hole. I know the players are superstitious, Rod. Is this something they're going to roll with until they don't get a winner? What's your thought on that? Well, Tigers' manager is a very bright man, as we do know. He's an Ivy <laughs> leader, so uh, don't get it twisted. <laughs> Jabba simply taking that lineup card out there to the Tigers and lose. <laughs> Holiday fouls off the second pitch he sees. He's now in an 0-2 hole to Joe Saunders, who fell behind three runs to the Tigers in the first. Ball high in the 91 mile an hour fastball from Saunders. Brian Holiday has done a very nice job this year. He does not get a chance to play all that often, but when he does get an opportunity, uh, he's been good on both sides of the ball. Waves and misses there. Saunders gets his first strike out of the night. And here's what John told me about having the role of bringing out that scorecard to home plate pregame. We had lost a couple in a row, and uh, I just saw Brad, and I think Gino was taking it out. And I was like, Brad, can I take it out? And he goes, well, let's see uh, let's see how Gino does today, and uh, if not, we'll uh, let you take it out tomorrow. So I come in, I kind of forgot, and then I walked in. I was like, ooh, I'm taking the card. And he gave it to somebody else. I was like, I thought you said I was taking the card today. And we ended up winning 2-1. to one. And uh, so he kind of just uh, the next day uh, didn't really think about it, and he, he just kind of walked up to me and gave me the card. And I was like, I guess, uh, I guess I'm going back at it. And uh, so far, so good. So far, so good indeed. Maybe Jabba will pull double duty tonight, taking that card out to a home plate pregame and maybe see him on the mound a little later as this one rolls on from Arlington. Nothing wrong with a little superstition. But, guy, the Tigers are just playing good baseball, getting good starting pitching. 
good defense. The offense is swinging the bat. That's how you win games, and that's what they're doing. Eugenio Suarez takes the ball. Ahead in the count, three balls and one strike. Saunders falls behind once again. And how much trouble can Saunders get in facing this lineup if he continues to fall behind, guys? Well, if he continues to get himself in predictable fastball counts as he sits right now, he does not have the stuff uh, to throw the ball by. A lot of these Tigers right hand bad. And after a two for four night last night, in his first at bat tonight, Suarez draws a walk, and the Tigers have some action in their half of the second. Trevor Thompson up in the booth alongside Craig Monroe and Ron Allen. Mario Pemba struck with uh, something a little earlier today. He didn't feel well, couldn't make it to the ballpark. I talked to him on the phone, asked him for a few pointers, and he could barely get it out. I mean, the guy was not feeling well at all. We wish, we wish Mario well. He will be back soon, guys. Tell you what, I really want him back tomorrow night. <laughs> I've always wanted to call a big league game. I mean, who hasn't if you're in this profession? You want to, you want to call some play-by-play. -play. And when they gave me the call today and said Mario was sick, my, my comment to Joe Nickel, our producer, was, I guess you got to be careful what you wish for in this life, because here I am, and I don't know if I'm ready for it. Enjoy. <laughs> not time en to prepare, Rod. Enjoy your evening. Uh, having a blast. <laughs> having a blast for sure. Suarez with a little fake doesn't go. As Rajay Davis takes a strike. A lot of excitement on his face over here. I love it. Yeah, he tuned in. He is. I'm just trying not to get in the way. You know what I'm saying? Doing a good job, kid. Trying not to get in the way. Well, the great Rod Allen's up here, so I had no fear at all. I mean, that guy's back is going to be tired carrying me all night <laughs> long, but hey, he knows what he's doing over there. Saunders will throw to first, keeping Suarez close. It's almost relaxing being up here, guys. I'm calling a game the way the game unfolds like this. Baseball at a slower pace than hockey, certainly, and uh, you get a chance to take in the action. And nice night here in Arlington. Having a lot of fun in the booth with the boys, no doubt about it. Saunders kicks, delivers. Rajay. High down the first base line. Out of play. Saunders now ahead in the count. One and two to Rajay Davis. Craig, you had to be excited to catch up with your former buddy, Carlos Payne, who is now back in the big leagues playing first base for the Texas Rangers. Always excited to see Mr. Carlos Payne, one of my favorite people. Just an unbelievable talent. Real good go glove first baseman, too. He can pick it. And a better person. Yes, he is. He's Morgan's godfather. He started hanging out in 1998, Port Charlotte, with the Rangers. And just continued to play with each other every year after that. And then he just took off. He started hitting bombs and left me all down in the minor leagues. I finally <laughs> caught up with him, though. Of course, Morgan is Craig's daughter, a volleyball player. Craig, she's off to a tournament today, right? Yes, they're in Minnesota, National Volleyball Tournament. I'll be headed there tomorrow. Good luck to Morgan as Rajay Davis lifts one into center field, sinking fast. But it's caught by Alex Rios. His long legs get him there in time. For the second out of the inning. And just a reminder, as you enjoy a cold one, to look forward to the Miller Light. Miller Lite time later in the game tonight. Brought to you by Miller Lite. One on, two out for Ian Kinsler, the former Ranger, stepping up for the second time tonight, looking to do damage against his former team. Certainly did that last night. Craig Monroe knows just how good that feels to come in to your former ballpark and do some damage and get a win for your current team. It can be a challenge at times, too, Trev, because you're, you're, you're so amped up to play them, uh, and you want to do damage bad. There goes Suarez, and he's out. Caught stealing. We mentioned the arm of Chirinos behind the plate, and he shows it off right there as he gets Eugenio Suarez to end the inning. No damage done. The Tigers still carry a 3 0 lead to the bottom half of the second. We'll be back to Arlington after this.
David Arlington. There's Adrian Beltre set to lead things off for the Rangers in their half of the second inning. And here are three things you need to know about Adrian Beltre. One of three players with 30 plus home runs in each of the last three seasons. He's one of five players with three home runs in both a regular season and a postseason game. And this cat was 15 years old when the Dodgers signed him back in 84. Certainly they must have had a crystal ball seeing what they were getting from a kid that young at that time, Rod. Well, scouts, uh, they project the young kids from Latin America. And most come over at age 15 or 16 back in the day when Beltre uh, was at that tender age. And what they do project is they're very small. They're not very big in stature, but you get them to the United States and you start to feed them a little bit better. They get three square meals a day. And next thing you know, they turn into Adrian Beltre. A guy with 2,500 plus career hits with his four hit performance last night. He's got great numbers as well against Anibal Sanchez. He was six for eight in his career against Anibal. And even with that strike, he's ahead in the count right now. Two balls, one strike to the Rangers' third baseman. Sanchez with a comfortable three nothing lead so far here in the second inning although I don't know if a lead can really be called comfortable in a ballpark like this grounder to shortstop Suarez up to Miggy at first one away Adrian Beltre hit this ball so hard he about knocked the youngster Suarez <laughs> over and he put him back on his heels but Suarez able to gather himself in and throw the ball across the diamond while we have a moment, I'd like to wish my lovely bride happy birthday. Today is Adrian's birthday, and I will not say how old she is. She will get very upset at me, but uh, today's her birthday, and uh, honey, I hope you have a wonderful day and a nice evening as well. Echo those sentiments. Happy birthday, Mrs. Allen, and many happy returns of the day. I call her mama, so I'm going to say happy birthday, mama. <laughs> Count is now even to Alex Rios. One and one. One away here in the bottom half of the second. Foul straight back by Rios, who's now in a hole. One ball, two strikes. To Sanchez, who he can come up with just about anything in a situation like this. He, he masterfully controls all the pitches in his repertoire. Craig, what's your anticipation of what he might want to do here with Rios? You know what? He might climb the ladder here, change his eye level, go up in the zone with a fastball. In the dirt, trying to get him to chase to no avail. Nice block there by Brian Holiday. He and both uh, Alex Avila, they do marvelous work when they do call uh, for the breaking ball. They anticipate uh, that the Tigers' pitchers are going to bounce it, and they're ready to block it. Here comes that fastball, Craig. And it blows by Alex Rios for the second out of the inning and the second strike out of the evening for Anibal Sanchez. Sanchez's stuff is just dirty. I mean, the ball moves every which way. This is 89 miles, 94 miles down that meter. And the ball just darts down and in on the hands of Alex Rios. Former Tiger and one of the best friends in the life of Craig Monroe. Carlos Pena stepping to the plate. First look at Anibal Sanchez tonight. A lot of respect for Carlos Peña. He's kind of traveled, been up and down. He's been in AAA, had to fight his way back to the big leagues. Uh, and I like the fact that he just hasn't given up, Rod. He continues to, to keep himself in good shape. He keeps working hard, and he keeps finding a job. Well, he continues to get jobs because he's such a stellar individual. Uh, he works well with the young kids. He's a good person. There's no doubt about that. And having that left-handed power bat in a yard like this certainly wouldn't hurt the Rangers if he can get it going. Well, all their first basemen have gotten hurt this year. Mitch Morton, you know, Prince Fielder. Uh, they desperately needed another first baseman, and Pena was available. Uh, so they signed him. They sent him to the minor leagues. He went down, did well. Now he finds himself back in the big leagues again. Playing with him down in the minor leagues when I was with Texas, tremendous, tremendous power, but was a guy that swung and missed a lot. And I always said about Carlos Pena, if he could find a way to make more contact 
and really shorten that swing. I mean, he would be a heck of a player. Does hit a lot of home runs, but I'd like to see him get that average up a little bit. Fouls that off to stay alive. One ball, two strikes to the former Tiger. Two outs here in the Rangers half of the second inning. Three nothing Tigers if you're just joining us. Anibal Sanchez stake to that three nothing lead in the Tigers half of the first. They got to Joe Saunders and that's going to make life difficult for Ranger hitters the rest of the way because Sanchez can certainly deal. Grounder to Miggy. He'll take care of it all by his lonesome and that'll be the end of the Rangers in the second inning. Craig Monroe is about to take himself down beside the dugout to deliver a few nuggets the rest of the way for us. Looking forward to that, Craig. I am. It should be fun. Uh, I just hope that the boys don't give me too much of a hard time. We're about to find out. <laughs>Suarez was caught stealing to end the Tigers half of the second. Ian Kinsler was in the batter's box at the time, so he'll lead things off here at the top of the third for the Tigers, who have themselves a three to nothing lead. They got to Joe Saunders early in this one. Kinsler scored the game's second run after drawing a walk in his first half bat. Rod, how much fun has this guy been having over the last few days celebrating his 32nd birthday? The Tigers have been winning. He's had a couple of multi hit games thrown in the mix. Obviously good to see from Ian Kinsler, a guy of Brad Osmus likes very much. And not only that, he's wearing out his former club. When they were at Comerica Park for that four-game series, Ian Kinsler was on fire. He's looking to fan the flames here in his second A-B tonight. Saunders kicks and delivers. Ball low. Joe Saunders continues to fall behind Tigers hitters. He's thrown a total of 38 pitches. He has missed the strike zone with half of those. And that goes down the line. That could be extra bases for Kinsler. Touches first and does not stop. Standing up, heading into second. And as you say, continues to wear out his former team, Rod. Well, the problem with Saunders so far, he's gotten himself in way too many friendly fastball counts. That ball's away. Uh, from Ian Kinsler, but he knows he's going to get a fastball, so he gets out in front of it, and even the talented third baseman, Adrian Beltre, uh, couldn't dive and knock it down, and before Choice picks it up in left field, Kinsler aboard with his 24th double of the season.
And as you say, Saunders working himself into a world of trouble here as he faces the heart of the Tigers order with a leadoff man on second and Miguel Cabrera digging in at the plate. Victor Martinez to follow. Miggy looks at strike one. These particular situations right here really impress me uh, with Miguel Cabrera. There's nobody out. There's a runner on second base. He could definitely hit the ball in the seats. Uh, but what he'll be trying to do is hit something past the first baseman or past the second baseman in the right field to drive Kinsler home at the very least getting the third base. Count now even at one and one. 394 batting average for Miguel Cabrera with runners in scoring position. And he usually leads that department. Saunders has now been behind seven of the 12 hitters that he's faced so far tonight. As Rod mentioned, that will be trouble if that trend continues. Inside, backs Miggy off the plate. Two balls, one strike. Odor, the second baseman, is really playing close to second base. He knows all about his uh, former teammate. He is Kinsler, has the ability to steal third. And Kinsler will run even when Miguel's standing in that batter's box. He's not afraid to steal. Rangers outfield plays Miggy straight up. He goes opposite field. That's going to land inside the line. Extra bases for Miggy as he touches first and heads to second. That'll score Ian Kinsler, and Cabrera has himself RBI number two on the night and 63 on the season. He is such an unselfish player. Saunders threw every pitch to Miguel inside because he knew Miggy wanted to drive the ball the opposite way, and this is not an easy pitch to do it with. Uh, this ball is on the inner third of home plate, but look at Miguel uh, pull his hands close to his body and flip that ball the opposite way for a double. And they are wearing out Joe Saunders, and that is one of the more impressive things about Miguel Cabrera. There are many, but the fact that he plays the game so unselfishly uh, is a wonderful trait to have. Snapped an 0 for 6. Slumped did Miggy right there with uh, that double down the line. The Tigers with their fifth extra base hit of the night so far. Rod we're only in the third. Grounder to short. And the first. The Tigers Victor Martinez for the first out of the Tigers half of the third inning. Well, Joe Saunders that uh, came into this contest giving up a 368 batting average to the opponent. So uh, if he was not going to be on, if he's not going to get ahead of the Tigers hitters, uh, that batting average against him is going to go way up. J.D. Martinez now with a 14 game hitting streak. Digs in, takes ball one. Rod, we've talked a lot about the streak that Martinez is in. Is the one thing you can point to that's led to his success and one thing you've seen him do consistently day by day? No, he's just getting a chance to play. I mean, obviously, he was down in the minor leagues wearing out Triple A pitch. I mean, he had 10 homers and 17 games down there with Toledo. Uh, the Tigers knew that they had something special in J.D. when the Houston Astros released him. Al Alavila is the assistant general manager. He knows JD because they're both from South Florida. He knew he could hit. They signed him to go to AAA. Uh, a situation presented itself for him to come to the big leagues, and he's been on fire. 415 over that 14 game hitting streak. 16 rimmies. Dude has been producing. Fouls that one off. Now he's behind to Saunders. One ball, two strikes. He also made some adjustments with his hands. His hands used to be a lot higher when he was with uh, the Houston Astros, but he started in training, training to lower the hands where they are right now. And he's also watched a lot of video of Miguel Cabrera, how he holds his hands, and a lot of people watch Miguel. Now they can't pattern themselves after Miggy totally, uh, but he's a really good teacher. See a successful man and do likewise. It's pretty good advice when it comes to Miguel Cabrera at the batter's box. Two and two as Martinez takes a ball there. He was the count. And Rod, how can it help to have your hands a little lower? How, how does that adjustment make a difference for JD? Well, they don't have to go as far. Uh, you can go from point A to point B a lot quicker than if his hands were a lot higher. You have longer to, uh, ways to go and make your swing a lot longer. Works the count full. 
Another RBI opportunity for a guy who's driven in a lot of runs over the last 14 games in J.D. Martinez. With Miguel Cabrera standing on second base. And Martin in center field's got a pretty good arm, as does Alex Rios in right field. Michael Choice's arm in left field is just average. Foul ball down the third base line. That was pitch number 50 of the night for Saunders. Yeah, take a look at the JD's hands and where they start. And he just goes from point A to point B. Very little movement leading with the bat now. He's been really good lately. Took him a while to really feel comfortable with that swing, but he's comfortable now. Works himself a lot. And I've been on first and second. With one out. And now it's time for you to tweet your photo using the hashtag Detroit Fan Photo for a chance to have it shown in an upcoming broadcast. That's brought to you by AT&T. Another conference at the mound as Mike Maddox comes up to have a chat with the veteran left-hander and What's going on in that conversation about this point in the ball game, Rod? 50 pitches thrown by Saunders. He's down four to nothing with a couple of men on. Well, he's probably telling him to mix in a few off-speed pitches early in counts. He's having a difficult time of commanding his fastball. He's fallen behind just about every single hitter that he has faced this evening, and he's fallen behind by throwing fastballs. Go to a changeup. Go to a curveball. See if you can get a feel for those pitches, and then get back to your fastball. Torrey Hunter digs in. Last time up, he swung at the first fastball that he saw. Flew out to center field. Look like that fella might have went to Six Flags today. <laughs> Without any sunscreen. Although he wasn't at Six Flags when we rolled in on the bus today. It Ew. was pouring rain here in Arlington. Clouds have since parted. Got ourselves a great night for baseball here at Globe Life Park. You and I had the pleasure of uh, having a really nice conversation with uh, Brad Osmus uh, last night, and he told us how difficult it's going to be moving forward with uh, his outfielders, with Hunter and Jackson and Rajay Davis and J.D. Martinez, the way uh, that he is swinging the bat. Andy Dirks will be back up here shortly, but it's a pleasant problem to have if you're Brad Osmus when you have uh, four guys fighting for playing time. And the one thing I took away from that conversation with Brad Osmus last night, Rod, was this guy is as cool as they come at the ballpark, away from the ballpark. He is just steady, calm, cool. And he said that his 18 years in the big league certainly prepared him for knowing what to expect during a big league season, how to ride out the rough patches. And it's certainly shown in his first year as manager of the Tigers. Well, he's well grounded. That much is for certain. Torrey finds a hole. They're going to hold Miggy at 30, runs through the stop sign. Scores the Tigers fifth run of the ball game. That's how good Miggy is. Dave Clark held him up because Dave did not want Miggy to run into an out at home plate. But Miggy simply ran right through the stop sign that Dave Clark put up. And there wasn't even a play at home plate on McGinn. He has got tremendous base running instincts. What he's also done is given Torrey Hunter RBI number 36 on the season as well as a 5 nothing leap for the Tigers in their half of the third. Now here's one look at Miguel Cabrera running right through the stop sign. <laughs> he didn't break stride. Dave Clark had the stop sign up and Miggy just kept on trotting. Dave's pointing his bag with one <laughs> hand up. You think Dave's feelings are hurt? <laughs> <laughs> I hope that Miggy doesn't drive his car on the streets of Detroit like that running through stop signs. Miguel did that a lot to Gene Lamont when Gene Lamont was coaching third base too. He knows when he can score. Dave was playing it safe there. Two balls, no strikes to Nick Castellanos, who flew out to center field in his first at bat. There's Gino. He's the bench coach now. He was the bench coach last year in Jim Leland's final season as the skipper. And they hired him for a couple of more years to sit next to. And Brad Osmus. And it's got to be a great little ace in the hole to have a baseball mind like that to pick as your bench coach. Yeah. 
Swing for Castellanos. That was going to get into the seats down the right field line. Two balls and a strike to the Tigers' third baseman. Two men on, one out. Tigers up 5 nothing here in their half of the third inning. Trevor Thompson sitting in for Mario and Pemba tonight, who's back at the hotel. Ill. Did not sound good earlier, but the hope is he'll be back in his customary position alongside Rod Allen tomorrow night for the final game of this three game set in Arlington. Well, for Mario to miss a game, uh, you know he was not feeling good today. Take one more look at Miguel Cabrera out of second base. Look at Andrews here. This is the shortstop, obviously, and Miguel Cabrera knows exactly where he's playing. And when the ball's hit uh, by Torrey Hunter, he knows because he's almost playing directly behind him. Even though he's a very athletic shortstop, he can't get there. He dove for it. He almost got it, but Miguel Cabrera is already in no man's land, and he simply got such a great jump. He knew he could score. That's why he ran through the stop sign. Drive deep. Plays it on the warning track. That'll advance the runner. JD Martinez moves on to third as Castellanos flies out to center for the second time tonight. Runners now in the corners for the Tigers. We were told that Brian Holiday left 100 plus tickets to family and friends to attend tonight's game. That's a lot of loot he spent. He told me uh, that he was going to have uh, a lot of support here this evening. Uh, he went to TC TCU uh, and played collegiately there. And it's TCU night tonight here at the ballpark. So uh, I think he and his bride, well, he couldn't do so, but they were supposed to have a huge tailgate party outside. I think the rain probably uh, curtailed some of that. Uh, but it's uh, Brian Holiday night here. Two on, two out. Joe Saunders down five runs here in the third inning to the Tigers. It's Brian Holiday looking to do more damage. Swing and a miss. 0 oh 2 to the Tigers catcher. And he struck out his first time up today. He swung in a bad pitch against Joe Saunders. Looks like he might be uh, trying to do a little bit too much this evening, Trevor, with so many fans and friendly and friends and family in attendance. One at bat can calm all of those nerves, especially if you knock in a run. And that one's high. In comes Martin. Makes the grab. Gets the Rangers out of the threat. But they'll go to their half of the third down five to nothing. And Anibal Sanchez heads back to the mound for the Tigers with a big lead. We'll be back early after this.
That was May 23rd when Annabelle Sanchez faced the Rangers back in Detroit. Gave up just two runs that game. Five hits over seven innings pitched. Got the win on 99 pitches and looks to be duplicating the same feat here tonight with a 5 nothing lead as the Rangers come to bat in the third. First pitch strike to Chirinos. Well, that's rather Michael Choice at the plate right now. Excuse me. And Michael Choice is in a hole 0 and 2. Annabelle Sanchez commands four pitches. That was a nice little breaking ball thrown at 79 miles an hour to get ahead of uh, Michael Choice. Strikes him out for strikeout number three on the evening. And he didn't even waste the pitch. Here's a changeup, an 0-2 changeup to Michael Choice, but you can see uh, how this ball really darts down and into the right-handed batter. He's got tremendous fade action uh, to the arm side with that change piece. You just don't know what to expect when you're in a hole like that to a guy who has so many pitches that he can control Rod. If he makes a mistake with his fastball early in the count, you have to hit it. Other than that, you really have to be in two-strike mode uh, when you go up against Anibal Sanchez. Trinos takes a ball, the first pitch he sees of the evening in his first at bat against Sanchez. Kicks and delivers. Foul ball, out of play. Trinos is really throw. He's already thrown out three Tigers in the series. He gets the ball from his glove and down to second base in about 1.9 seconds, uh, which is tremendous. And most guys, most big league catchers are two and above, but Trinos is one of those guys that's below two seconds. So he, along with Salvador Perez, Molina in St. Louis. You know, Rod, Craig and I had a chance to talk with the great Pudge Rodriguez earlier today, and he's around this team a lot. Do you think maybe Torinos has picked his brain as far as how to get a quick release and how to be effective and efficient getting runners out. Well, not only has he picked his brain, but uh, Pudge Rodriguez still puts the Texas Rangers uniform on, and he has worked with Torinos on his footwork. That's trouble down the line and left. That's going to go off the wall. JD will play it off a couple of hops. And Torinos has himself a stand up double with one out here in the Rangers half of the third. His eighth double of the season, a nice piece of hitting against the pretty tough pitcher. Annabelle Sanchez was able to get ahead of him one ball and two strikes and the ball is down to the bottom of the zone But uh, Chirinos he goes down to get it and he rips it off that left field wall in left field for a stand-up double So the Rangers think they have a little something going here in their half of the third Chirinos on second one out And Rugnud Odor Steps to the dish for the first time tonight. In case you're just joining us, Mario and Pemba back on the Hotel Ill tonight. Trevor Thompson filling in for him alongside Rod Allen, Craig Monroe down in the dugout along with us here tonight as part of the broadcast crew. Glad to have you along as Odor swings and misses. Even the count at one and one. Certainly Mario get well soon. Hope that doesn't linger. You brought him some water bananas and wished him well before you left today. How was he feeling? Yeah, before I left the hotel, knocked on his door, took him some water, took him some Gatorade. Also gave him a banana if he wanted to uh, eat something and get some potassium back in his system. Food poisoning is uh, no fun. Not at all. So we certainly wish Mario well tonight. Sanchez gets set to deliver one more time. He's ahead in the count. One ball and two strikes to Odor, the man on second. He's looking at strike three. That'll be the second out of the inning. And let's take this opportunity to get back to Mickey York inside the studio for a game break. Mickey.
Hey, thanks, pal. I appreciate that. And uh, congratulations to Tim Lincecum on that no-hitter today. And certainly the guy in the mound has twirled one in his past before, back in September of 06. Anibal Sanchez, as a rookie, he threw a no-hitter for the Marlins. That is already the third no-hitter thrown this year. A couple of Dodgers have done it. Kershaw and Beckett, and now Tim Lincecum. Second no-hitter today for him against San Diego. Mickey brought that up. 16th no-hitter in San Francisco Giants history. They said he was washed up a couple of years ago, too. They say dynamite comes in small packages. It would certainly apply when you talk about Tim Lincecum. That guy is no bigger than a minute, and he can deal. And when he came up, uh, his stuff was as good as any right-hander in the league, even though he wasn't very big in stature. Then he lost uh, his fastball. He lost his spot in the rotation in the World Series a couple of years ago. He's pitching on the bullpen for the Giants. And he kind of recaptured his swagger against the Tigers in the postseason that year. He was back in the rotation uh, that following season, and he really hasn't looked back since. Might have a little swag after today's performance as well. Another no hitter. Congrats to Tim Lipscomb. Lipscomb. Foul ball. 0 and 2. Sanchez gets ahead of Leonis Martin. He grounded out, trying to bunt his way on base to lead off the ball game. Sanchez, a nice play to Miggy. And that threat. Screaming foul ball down the first baseline. That guy grabbed it. He's got a glove on, but he might have barehanded it. Did you see, Rod? No, I did not see. He stuck his right hand up rather quick, and the glove is obviously on the left hand. Let's see if we can see on the replay. He grabbed it with the bare hand. All the injuries the Rangers have, they might want to sign him up. <laughs> he did catch it with the glove. Wise move. He might have saved somebody with that glove. Good thing he brought it to the ballpark tonight, Rod. Especially when you sit down there really close. You have to watch the action. Balls get into the uh, stands in a hurry. You want to be paying attention for sure when you're sitting that low. Holiday keeps that in front of him. So Chirinos will not advance. One and two to the Rangers center fielder. Sanchez with four strikeouts already this evening and a five nothing lead so he's throwing with some confidence right now. Two and two. Ball high and tight by Sanchez who's mixing it up. Elvis Andrus on deck. For the Rangers who are threatening with a man on second. Ball low. Holiday, another good job keeping that one from scooting behind him. Full count to Martin. Second full count that the Rangers have run against Sanchez here tonight. Keen takes time. Now he's set. As is Sanchez. Ball four. Rangers now have two men aboard. With two out in their half of the third. Hitting 270 on the season. Lined out in his first at bat. He's got some pop in his bat. Oh, 
He can be a dangerous hitter. He's a good two way player. He's got really good speed, steals a lot of bases. And he's the one guy that you really want to keep off the base path. Not scoring as many runs this year as he has in years past. And the reason for that is Chu, who bats behind him, is not having a good year. They signed him as a free agent in the offseason and gave him a lot of dollars, but he's playing injured right now and he really can't swing the bat. And Prince Fielder, they got him from the Tigers. Prince, and he's going to be on the disabled list the remainder of the year. Mitch Moreland, who had a good year for them last year, he's also on the disabled list, so they don't have a lot of power right now. Grounded back up the middle. Handled easily by Sanchez and the Tigers are out of this one up by nothing as we head to the fourth. left off last night against the uh, Texas Rangers they've scored five runs on six hits and now let's bring in the third member of our broadcast crew Craig Monroe he is down in the camera 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 well down there right next to the Tigers dugout it's definitely a different view down here Rob. but I will tell you guys this I got down here in just enough time to hear Tory Hunter get on Nick Cassianos <laughs> for hitting the ball to Pretty high and deep to center, and it didn't go out. Said he needs to do a little bit more push ups so he can get that <laughs> ball out of here. That's a little bit of the joking that goes on uh, during the game inside the dugout. That's some of the same things that we say upstairs when someone hits one really, really far. I tell them to get back in the weight room. When guys leave the game, that's always what they say they miss most, the camaraderie, the joking around in the clubhouse with the fellas. It's really fascinating, Craig, and you would know that, to, to get 25 guys to pull in the same direction, to pull on the same rope in the same direction with one common goal, guys from Latin America, guys from the South, guys from the West. Uh, you put them in one room, and you've got one common goal, and that's to win a championship. And that's why the manager is so important, Rod, uh, to be able to connect with all those guys, with every guy, and, and have a relationship and get everybody going in the same direction. And truly take some talent. And, and obviously, Brad Osmus has been able to do it in his first year. Jim Leland was there, able to do it. Uh, so let's just hope that these guys continue uh, to have that togetherness, uh, that camaraderie that it takes to win a championship. Joe Saunders now in a full count to Eugenio Suarez. The Tigers leadoff hitter in the fourth inning digs in for another cut. Suarez reached on a walk in the second. And he's got himself a walk here in the fourth. 
to get things going for Detroit. Craig, you get a little antsy down there. You want to go put the uniform on, put some batting gloves on to get in the batter's box? <laughs> well, when you're getting down to this level here, field level, yeah, Rod, it makes you want to put the jersey back on, put the spikes on, and get after it. Obviously a fun time uh, playing at the major league level, and it was always fun to come back and play at home in the, for the Rangers, against the Rangers, and yes, so yes, yes, I would love to put the spikes on right now. Fella looks fit enough he could play right now. I know that. <laughs> He might get out of breath rounding second headed for third about this time. Oh, that much he for looks certain. fit. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Rajay Davis in an 0 1 hole to Joe Saunders with a man on first as the Tigers get things going here in the fourth. Look, I got a question for you regarding the, the outfield situation with, with the Tigers. I mean, you're an outfielder, and I mean, if you're sitting on the bench, I mean, and this is real talk. I mean, you want your teammates to do well, but how well do you want them to do if you happen to be that one guy that's sitting on the bench that night and you want to get in the game the next day? I love that question because I'm going to tell you the absolute truth. I want him to succeed. I, obviously, as a team, you want to win a championship, and it takes 25 guys to do it. But right at the same time, I want to be the guy out there doing the job and pretty much getting it done to allow our team to have success. So I wouldn't want to be the guy sitting on the bench. I wouldn't want to be the odd man out. How did Jim Leland handle those situations? I mean, when you were going good and of course you had some other guys in the out. Granderson was going good. Marcus Timms was fighting for some playing time. Sheffield was playing some outfield. I mean, what did Jim do at that time? Well, my goal was to do what J.D. Martinez is doing. Stay hot. Let's try to continue to drive in runs, have great, uh, great at bats, because when you do that, uh, good things happen. Uh, but the one thing that Jim did, he would just ride the hot hand. When whoever's hitting well, they're going to play, and that's why you're seeing J.D. Martinez being ran out there every single night. Ball in tight to Rajay Davis. Even the count of two balls, two strikes. And Rajay seeing the ball really well right now, getting set with that front foot, not a lot of moving parts. Therefore, able to take uh, such a close pitch there, which Saunders thought will strike three. Rod, that's actually the adjustment that uh, Rajay Davis has uh, has made in his swing. I talked to him yesterday in the clubhouse, and he said the one thing that he felt like he wasn't doing, he wasn't ready to hit uh, when the ball was in a hitting zone. So he's done a lot of work uh, with. Wally Joyner also with Denial Cole, and they're working on getting that front foot down to where he can recognize pitches and take really good swings. Yeah, he had three hits yesterday, and he tripled early today, so it looks like he is getting himself uh, in a really good balanced position, which uh, allows him to get maximum bat speed. And in that at-bat, he became Saunders' second strikeout victim of the night. First out of the fourth for the Rangers as Ian Kinsler steps in. And you know he's locked in right now, Rod. He talked last night about how hearing some boos and hearing some cheers all he heard was noise but yeah. the fact that he was hearing noise really got him to lock in. He raised his intensity level his focus a little bit and certainly paid off for him the Tigers. I knew Ian was a good player. I watched Ian play when he was in college and before obviously he even got into pro ball and he was just a guy that played fearless. He played the game hard. He played both sides of the ball. He could always steal base. He had power and he played the game with a lot of confidence and we're seeing all that here. Uh, in the big leagues. He's had a nice little big league career so far. Last night, Brad Osmus called him dynamic. So he didn't know he was this dynamic. He could do so many things. And watching him up close and having him play for him each and every day, he's got a chance to see that. And uh, Kinsler has become one of his favorites. Kinsler's a very intelligent player, uh, Rod and, Rod and, and Trev. Uh, the one thing that I love that he did is he changed his approach. Here in Texas, the ball flies. So you could get under the baseball a little bit and the ball would fly out of the ballpark. Well, he has a different approach at Comerica Park. He, he made a conscious effort to try to get on top of the baseball more. And instead of driving it over guys, he is trying to drive it through guys. And that's why he's ha he has so many doubles this year. He is hitting the ball gap to gap. And he's got himself in a favorable count here. Three balls, no strikes. There's ball four. And the Tigers have two men aboard in the fourth. As Saunders continues to try to find it here tonight. You see him shaking his head. Obviously, Rod, not the situation he wants to find himself in right now with, again, the heart of the Tigers order coming up. And 
Big Mickey digging in, looking for another RBI opportunity. Well, Ron Washington had to dip into his bullpen last night for about six different relievers. He's going to have to do the same thing here this evening uh, because Saunders does not appear uh, that he's going to be around very much longer. He's already thrown 78 pitches and he's thrown 40 balls and 30 strikes. Uh, he is not throwing the ball over the play here this evening against Tigers batting. He has issued five walks in three and a third so far. So the Tigers taking advantage of every opportunity. And Miguel Cabrera with two ribbies already this evening. Looking to do a little more damage. Rod, watching, watching uh, Miguel Cabrera's approach tonight, it looks like he is committed uh, to driving the ball the opposite way. We saw him do it in the first inning on the sack fly, and then he shot a double to right uh, in, in the top of the uh, third inning. It, does that look, is, is, are you seeing the same thing? Does it look like Miggy is making a conscious effort to drive the ball, knowing that Saunders is going to try to stay away from him? Absolutely. He had not uh, really... Uh, in the last couple of days done much. He was 0 for 6 coming into the at bat his first time up. So uh, that's what Miguel does to get himself back on track. And it doesn't start in the game. It starts in his pregame uh, routine in batting practice. He'll simply stay on every ball and try to hit everything the right field. So uh, he's one guy that can get himself back on track. Ball away to Miggy. And you say he wouldn't be around long Rod. Well there's already action in the Texas pen. The right hander Scott Baker up getting loose. We could see him sooner rather than later if Mickey cashes in with a couple of runners aboard right now. And Texas has got the worst pitching in the league. They rank dead last in earned run average. Their ERA is four, five, six as a team. Back up the middle. Caught and doubled off is Suarez. That'll end the threat. And then the Tigers have for the fourth. But they do have themselves a 5 0 lead. We'll see what the Rangers do when they're half of the fourth when we come back to Arlington after this. Go to the bottom of the fourth. And here's a reminder, fans. The Tigers host the Tampa Bay Rays on July 4th at 7.08 p.m. The first 10,000 fans, 21 and older, receive a free Tigers Stars and Stripes Tumblr. Plus, stay after the game for a fireworks spectacular. Call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com for more information. Shin Su Chu, the first of the Rangers to face Anibal Sanchez here in the... Home half of the fourth inning. Sanchez with a 5 0 lead and looking solid again tonight. His first pitch of the fourth is low for a ball. 
Rob, they gave Chu a ton of dough to come here. He hasn't really panned out so far. So he takes another ball. What's been the biggest problem from your perspective for Sin Chu Chu here in Texas so far? Well, he's got a bad ankle, and it's his left ankle. And that's the ankle that you need to really be an effective hitter as far as uh, rotating on your backside. It allows you to get through the baseball. He hasn't been able to do that. Punches one through the hole there for a single to start the fourth. And that's exactly what he did. He punched it through uh, the infield. Great effort uh, by Miguel Cabrera. He left his feet, but he couldn't slow it down. Ian Kinsler at the second base position could not slow it down either. That brings up third baseman Adrian Beltre who had himself a night last night four hit night none of those hits were extra base hits surprisingly there's a guy with a lot of power but one of those hits the one he had in the second inning was his 2500 career hit as a big leaguer and getting it done for a long time and has an opportunity now to get his team back in the ball game with one swing of the bat trailing five to nothing. Takes the first pitch he sees for ball one. Sanchez comes back with another strike to even the count at one and one. Chew on first. So far tonight, Anibal Sanchez has thrown 55 pitches, 34 of them for strikes, mixed in 21 balls very effectively so far. With four strikeouts and a 5 0 lead. I know Anibal Sanchez has missed some time this year. He spent a little bit of time on the disabled list, but uh, he should be an all-star this year. He should be in Minnesota with the best pitchers in the American League because he is one of the best right-handed pitchers in the American League as we speak. Is there another Tiger starter you'd like to add to that all-star roster in your mind right now, Rock? Some other guys are having some good win years and there's no doubt about that Porcello's up there and wins Max Scherzer are also up there and wins but I think their ERA might be a little bit too high. That one gets away from holiday Chu gets himself down to second safely and he's now in scoring position Chu must be feeling pretty good here today. He got a real nice break on the ball in the dirt that was blocked uh, by Brian holiday didn't take Brian holiday uh, very long to locate the ball but Chu was already on his way down to second base and able to make it there safely. Wild pitch charged to Sanchez. Chu running on the spot, maybe loosening up that ankle. Rod. Looks like he's ready to go. He wants to wheel it. Looking to score the Rangers' first run of the game. Beltre at the dish. Swings, fouls one off. Down the right field line and out of play. Two and two to get the count to the Rangers third baseman nobody out home half of the fourth man on second for the veteran third baseman. Inside quick feet by Beltre getting out of the way of that one count now full. He has such great command that was a purpose pitch right there by Anibal Sanchez to uh, make Beltre uncomfortable. And now if you're Bill Trey, you have to decide which pitch he's going to come back with with two strikes. And he can throw any of the four pitches that he wants and throw any of the four pitches for a strike in this 3-2 count. And Bell Trey lays a little lumber on that. That's going to find the gap and score the Rangers first run of the game. Chu comes around third. He'll score. Bell Trey into second with a stand up double. 5-1 Tigers lead as the Rangers finally get themselves on the board here in the home half of the fourth, the 17th double of the year for Adrian Beltre. Well, Sanchez really can't figure Beltre out. Beltre now 7 for 9, 7 for 10 in his career against Anibal Sanchez. It's a breaking ball that's up in the strike zone. Uh, didn't get down to the bottom of the zone, and Beltre just stays hot against the Tigers.
Alex Rios next man to the plate for Texas. Looking to add to it with Beltre on second. Well, Trail Beltre definitely proved that he wasn't scared. A lot of times when guys come inside, they move your feet. Uh, that, that front side wants to fly out. Give Beltre some credit. He stayed back on a really good breaking ball. Yeah, it was up, but the speed differential and just to be able to stay on that ball and drive it uh, in the gap to drive and run. Great piece of hitting. He's a really good player. Rangers have had trouble scoring runs lately, Rod. Just five runs, 11 runs rather, in their last five games. Three or fewer in each of their last five straight. So they've had a tough time putting some runs on the board lately. And when you add the fact that the pitchers haven't been very good either, they're giving up a lot of runs and they're not scoring a lot of runs. That's a lethal combination uh, for losing at this level. And they've been doing a lot of le losing lately. Rios takes ball two, ahead in the count now, two and one. Tigers still looking for their first out of the fourth. Up four runs here in Texas tonight. Turned into a great night for baseball after that rain had passed through the area, Rod. It is a, play, a very pleasant evening for baseball here tonight. Craig, what's it, what's it like down on field level? You know what? I, I'm actually pretty cool. I'm liking that it was it was raining earlier today because now I got my short sleeve on the breeze is blowing I got these great fans around me. I mean it's 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 an all in all good night for Tiger baseball. You got your bodyguard with you too. I definitely got Kevin my bodyguard with me. He is <laughs> taking great care of me by the way. He's captain social down there. He's probably <laughs> talking to the fans. Just keep your head up on that camera well Craig. The ball comes over there fairly quickly in case you don't already know. Well, I've seen a few guys get drilled over here. Papa Bear, John Keating as well. So I'm going to make sure that I keep my head on a swivel. Because uh, if not, then I will wear one and just wouldn't be a, a, a welcome sight. That'll kind of spoil your day. That's, yeah, bro. A lot of Tiger. A lot of Tiger jerseys and hats down here at Global Life Park in Arlington. Rod the Tigers, they're everywhere. They travel well. I love it. <laughs> Full count to Rios, who figures he needs a brand new bat after fouling that one off. Back to the dugout, he strolls, gets a new piece of lumber. Tiger fans in the stands wanting to see in the ball Sanchez polish off Rios here with a full count. As he looks for his first out here in the bottom of the fourth inning. Another foul ball down the right field line and in the booth next to us. Former Tiger, former Ranger, future Hall of Famer, Pudge Rodriguez taking in the action. Craig, what was that like for you pregame catching up with your old teammate here in Texas and uh, in Detroit? Uh, it was just awesome. Um, to have the opportunity to tell him how excited I was to be a teammate of his, but to also have the ability to pick his brain. Uh, he is a tremendous talent behind the plate. I mean, even a better hitter. The ball seemed to slow down. It just seems to stop when he was at the batter's in the batter's box and he would put the barrel on it and hit it hard somewhere. He changed the culture uh, in Detroit when he signed that free agent contract before the uh, 2004 season. He was coming off a world championship with the Florida Marlins and he really didn't have a place to call home. The Tigers signed him to a lengthy contract and he changed the culture. I mean, the great Al Kaline said it was the a best free agent signing at that time they'd ever made. Well, taking a look at him right there, I asked him about his style on, you know, when he's on TV. Seems to me that Rod, he looks like he knows what he's doing. Yeah, he's fresh. Yeah. He's real fresh. I think we're, gonna, we're competing now. I think he, that's what he said. We're going to start competing. I said, that's just like Pudge, always wanting to compete, baby. Both of you guys have a healthy clothing budget, so <laughs> it'll be a tough competition, I'd imagine. Here comes the 11th pitch of the at-bat to Rios. He goes down swinging. 
Drag out number five on the evening for Sanchez, and the Tigers have them first, their first out of the home half of the court. This has been a very stressful inning for Anibal Sanchez. He was able to cruise through the first three, but uh, there's been some really good at bats in this inning. One by two, one by Beltre, and that was a lengthy at bat as well. And it turned in by Alex Rios. I don't know if you guys pay close attention to this, but Doc Holliday went out to talk to Anibal Sanchez and rightfully so because the Rangers are one of the best in the game when they get guys at second base guys it's not cheating if you're not trying uh, these guys are looking in trying to get the sign trying to tip something uh, to give the hitter the advantage I love it that Doc Holliday went out there changed the signs up and hopefully Anibal Sanchez can get himself uh, out of trouble here. It's with a, the guy at second base. Very fine line, though, from, you know, the guy that uh, may be giving some signs to relay those to the hitters and making sure that the signs that you are getting are correct. And then on top of that, being disciplined enough as a hitter, if he tells you a fastball is coming and then you get a breaking ball for you not to swing at that breaking ball, Craig. Well, it really starts with trust, right? And everybody has the same goal, and that's to win. And so when the guy's out there working his tail off to to get you the sign to give you an advantage uh, while you're at the batter's box uh, You got to trust him. You got to trust that he's that he's right and if he's wrong You know that he's only trying to help you One and one pitch from Sanchez falls in for a single they're going to hold Beltre at third and coming throw cut off by Mickey. The Rangers have a little something brewing with men at the corners and one out against Sanchez, who, as you say, Rod, is having himself a stressful inning as the Rangers work his pitch count out. Yeah, Pena got himself a fastball inside and uh, hits the ball to right. So take a look at the head of Beltre right before the pitch. He kind of like motioned with his head a couple of times to the inside corner. Don't know if he was tipping the pain that that ball was going to be inside or not, but that's the kind of stuff that goes on out there. First hit as a Texas Ranger for the former Tiger Carlos Pena. Keeps the inning going for Texas who has a little something brewing against Sanchez and what have you seen as far as Sanchez this inning Rod why is he run into a little bit of trouble here in the four boys well, just got to make an adjustment the Texas Rangers have made an adjustment they're making him throw the ball over the plate they've been laying off some of the borderline pitches uh, that he was getting away with in the first three innings but it's nothing unusual big league hitters will make adjustments their second time through now it's up to Anibal Sanchez to make the necessary adjustments to get himself out of this jam Having given up only one run, he needs a double play ball here in the worst way. And with his repertoire, you can certainly figure he's got a pitch in there that can induce a double play ball. As Michael Choice digs in, well, that one gets away from Holiday. Down to second goes Pena, wipes out any chance of the double play. Second wild pitch of the inning for Sanchez, Rod. That might be a pass ball, Trev. Looked like uh, Holiday turned his glove the wrong way. I don't know if he got crossed up as far as the pitch that was coming. Runner on, not on second base, usually doesn't call for a catcher to get crossed up, but that should go as a pass ball. Word up here so far as the scorer has charged it a wild pitch, but no. No, it is a pass ball. It's been changed, Rod. We're told, so we right again. Not that I doubt it, <laughs> what they were saying, but. Stand corrected. Chopper to third. Castellanos can't get a glove on it. Everybody's safe, and the Rangers score their second run of the game as Beltre crosses the plate. It's now a 5 2 ball game. One of those in between plays for Castellanos. He didn't know whether to come in or go back. He took two steps in, then he started backpedaling. He got back on his heels and therefore was not able to make that play. Nick obviously wishing he'd have handled that ball a little bit differently. Now we have men on first and second. Still one out. It looked like Nick realized that 
choice was running. He's he's a he's a fast guy, guy that can get down the line. And it looked like he wanted to come get it to make the play, and then just realized that I better stay back and, and, and try to knock it down. He just wasn't able to make a play. Goes as an error to Castellanos, an RBI for choice. And now Sanchez's tough inning continues. Robinson Chirinos in an 0 1 hole to start as Sanchez delivers again. Liner back up the middle, that gets through. Davis picks it up and they will score another run in the form of Carlos Pena. It's now a 5 3 ball game as Chirinos comes through with a run scoring single. Second base hit for Chirinos in the game. It's a fastball that basically splits the plate. And it's ripped right back up the box by Robinson Chirinos. He drives in the third run of the evening for the Texas Rangers. Rangers will look to continue to take advantage of the extra out giving to them by the air Castellanos at third. They now have men on first and second. With Odor at the plate. Sanchez struck him out in his first at bat of the ball game. And a base hit here could make it a one run ball game. Here in the home half of the fourth. Swing and a miss by Odor, who's now in an 0 2 hole. Outstanding changeup thrown by Sanchez. Came into this inning with just 50 pitches. He has thrown 30 in this inning. Now the pitch count sits at 80 for Annabelle Sanchez. Now look at a couple of arms up in the Tiger pen Lane Hardy and Chad Smith. Here's our high speed pitch brought to you by Xfinity on Anibal Sanchez. He's gotten up to 94 with his fastball and he's gone as low as 75 with that slow curveball that he features. Rognet Odor in a one and two hole to Sanchez. Two men on ball outside count is even now a two and two. Craig, what are you what are you seeing down there from Anibal Sanchez? Why have the Texas Rangers been able to uh, slow him down in this inning? Rod, the more and more I watch, guys, I, I fly ball to center. Davis hauls that in. Continue on, Craig. The, the more and more I watch, Rod, right, I've seen a lot of good swings with guys at second base. Being a former Ranger, I just know that the, the fact of the matter is this: when they get guys at second base, they swing the bat well. I don't know if because they're still in signs or not. I just know I've seen some really good swings since they've been a couple, with since Beltre has been at second base. And it brings up Leonis Martinez at a walk tonight, ground out. Chopper back to the mound. Sanchez pulls it in, toss to Mickey. And that'll do it. But damage has been done here in the home half of the fourth. Rangers put up three on the board. Tigers go to the fifth with a 5-3 lead. Victor Martinez due up to lead things off for the Tigers in the visiting half of the fifth. We're coming right back to Arlington after you watch this. We're watching Tigers baseball here.
Sam Bernstein Law Firm, the official legal services sponsor of Fox Sports Detroit. And by the new Chevy Silverado light duty and heavy duty lineup. Let's take one more look at the, the air given the Castellanos where he's kind of caught in between. He came in a couple steps and he backed up and he got on his heels and he couldn't make the play because he created a very difficult hop for himself. Uh, after the inning, Omar Vizquel talking to him about his footwork and what he probably should have done on that particular play. I remember having a conversation with Vizquel, the last homestand. He talked about the leaps and bounds that Castellanos has made uh, at third base this year, but the footwork is still the one thing that he constantly has to remind him of. All three on all three runs earned by the Rangers in their home half of the fourth. They now trail the Tigers five to three as the Tigers bat in the fifth with Victor leading it off. One for two with a double in the first inning here tonight. He's already scored a run. The Tigers got to Saunders early in this one. There's a drive to center field. That's deep. That would chase Martin back to the wall. Gone. Victor Martinez does it again. Solo shot. 6-3 Tigers on Victor's 20th of the year, Rod. And this guy just continues to tear the cover off the baseball. Nice call, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, it was. You nailed that. <laughs> Victor nailed it. Straight away center field on an 0-1 pitch. Martinez with his 20th of the year. And I know that you love what this guy does from both sides of the plate. And this time it's a, a solo shot from the right side. Well, I saw your interview today with Wally Joyner, the hitting coach. And Wally talked about how many swings Victor loves to take. And he, he has to do as much work as anybody and more because he has to do it from both sides of the dish. That'll be all for Joe Saunders night. And continuing on with that conversation that I had with Wally, what Wally said was even the guys in the dugout are impressed with each and every at bat that Victor shows up for and how he is in tune with every pitch. Wall side windows pitching change here in Arlington. When we come back, we'll tell you more about who's coming in next for the Rangers as this inning rolls on from Arlington. Solo shot by Victor Martinez has given the Tigers a 6-3 lead and chased Joe Saunders from the game. And in comes Sean Tolleson. Got some action last night. Rod Hill face J.D. Martinez. Try and cool this red-hot hitter off. And I don't know whether that's going to do it. There's a shot deep to the gap in right center. And that's gone back-to-back gaps. -back J.D. Martinez does it again. Homers for the second straight night. 
He'll take a slow trot around the bases and add another one to the Tigers. Lead it is now seven to three. This boy is off the chain. Off the he is off the chain right now. There it was right there, Rod. Right center where that jet stream is. J.D. got him a pitch out over the plate. We talked about it in the pregame. We talked about it before the game. When he gets extended, that is when he does damage. He drove that ball to right center. Beautiful. Yeah, the swing. ball is looking like a beach ball to J.D. Martinez these days. Tolleson delivers a first pitch strike to Torrey Hunter. Looking to get in on the act here tonight. So far in his return, Torrey with a single here tonight, a fly out in his first at bat. Okay. Ball one, so by one and one. Guys, it's a lot different being down here on the field because you get to see the reaction of the players. And you should have seen the look on Austin Jackson's face when he came back to his seat. Uh, he looked over at me and gave me this real ugly look like, <laughs> oh, that was just hit hard. Torrey grounds out to second. For the first out of the inning. Gotta bring Nick Castellanos to the plate. And we saw Tolleson in last night's game, Trev. You brought it up. He's got a fastball that will get up to 95. He also has a slider change up and a cutter. Not many cutters, but he throws lots of curveballs to uh, the left handed batters, and he throws lots of sliders uh, to the righties. What do you. What he threw to J.D. Martinez was a pitch that wound up going 387 feet over the wall. The gap in right center. Took the Tigers a 7-3 lead. Now he'll face Nick Castellanos. Nick dribbles one foul down the third baseline. And Rob, that's the fourth time the Tigers have gone back-to-back -back this season. The last time was in Cleveland on Saturday and certainly that's always a fun moment for the guys inside the dugout you barely get done celebrating one home run and you get to greet a guy with another well they got some guys uh, in the middle of the batting order that play big boy baseball and J.D. Martinez would be one Victor Martinez Miggy and the Tory uh, gets a hold of one every now and then as well well Saunders found out what it means to get behind the batters in this Tigers order and now Tolleson's behind Castellanos, two balls and one strike. He takes the sign and gets set to deliver again. Nick lifts one to the right field. Rios camps under it. Second out of the inning. Craig Monroe, he's down there beside the dugout right now, and this was when he was in uniform and at the dish as a Ranger. He knows what it's like to hit one out of the yard here in Texas. Well, see, Trev, that's probably, I think that was a one-two pitch fastball inside. I'm going to be honest, I didn't get that ball good, but in the jet stream, baby, I felt like I hit it in the upper deck. That's just a one roar, Craig Monroe. What was I thinking? I saw you blowing that ball out as you went down that first baseline. <laughs> that's right. Well, what gets me about that, Rod, he even remembers the count. Oh, and you don't forget much uh, when you're on the field. Uh, I mean, regardless of the year or the pitcher, you don't forget a lot. It was a it was a fastball. He tried to sneak the cheese by the red. I <laughs> caught him. Brian Holiday, grounder to short, Andrus to first, and that'll be it for the Tigers in half of the second. But they do a little more damage. A pair of home runs by Martinez and Martinez. The Tigers have themselves a 7-3 lead as we come to the fifth inning for the Rangers. King Tigers baseball on Fox Sports.
Jr. And no doubt, Tony Gwynn Jr. approached that at-bat with a heavy heart. His first at-bat after the passing of his father, the great Tony Gwynn. Rod, and that's a guy who can tear the cover off the baseball. His dad was a, a brilliant man. Uh, he's a great player, there's no doubt about that. It's evident uh, he's in the Hall of Fame. But uh, Tony Gwynn Jr., he, he said that uh, he started to tear up, and he said that was the toughest at-bat he'd ever had. And it's a very nice gesture by the... Uh, the fans there in Philadelphia to give him that standing ovation. And again, our condolences to the entire Gwynn family on the passing of the great Tony Gwynn, one of my favorite players growing up. It's good to see his son carry on. Obviously, a very tough at bat for him, but he will carry on. He's wearing his number 19, too. Great to see. Anibal Sanchez deals a strike. He's back in here for the fifth after throwing 34 pitches rod in a very stressful fourth inning where the Rangers put up their three runs. Well, he's going to have to have an easy pitch uh, inning here to get that pitch count back in shape. And he also wants to put a zero up on the board so many times this year after uh, the Tigers have scored runs and their pitchers go out there and give up runs. But uh, this would be a really this would bode well for the Tigers if Anibal Sanchez uh, did not allow them to score in this particular inning. Of course, Victor Martinez and J.D. Martinez went back to back in the Tigers half of the fifth to give the Tigers a 7-3 lead here in the home half. Grounder to short, Suarez up to Miggy, and there goes Andrus for the first out of the home half of the fifth. One of the things that uh, makes Sanchez so difficult to hit is the fact that he throws all his pitches from the same arm slot. That's the fastball, and it's straight over a high three-quarter. He comes back with a change up here, same arm speed, same arm slot, but a different grip on the baseball, which causes the ball to act differently. And this is what hitters are looking at against Sanchez. You really don't know which pitch to look for. He told me he patterned his game after Pedro Martinez. Craig, did you face Pedro Martinez when you were in the big leagues? I sure did. And it wasn't fun. But <laughs> just let me tell you. Are there any similarities with, I mean, from Sanchez and and Pedro Martinez well for me it's the movement uh, they have tremendous movement but they also know how to change speed Pedro was the best at it he changed speed he knew when to dial it up but he also knew when to take some off and that's what I see when I watch Anibal Sanchez Rod the other point I would like to make is that the deception in Sanchez delivery being in the batter box it, it's a challenge uh, to try to get that good rhythm when he comes set well when he comes up with that high knee and kind of turns right here makes it tough to hit Tough to time. Fly ball to left. J.D. Martinez camps under it. It's in his mitt for the second out of the fifth inning. Here's what uh, the opposing hitters are doing against some of the elite guys as far as their changeups are concerned in baseball. Felix Hernandez, uh, the batting average against his changeup, just 117. Porcello, we well documented uh, how well his changeup has gotten the last couple of years. John Danks, of course. And there's Anibal Sanchez on that list as well. Adrian Beltre takes a ball, count even at one and one, and got the scoring started with an RBI double in his last at bat. In Sanchez last inning. Said he went a little too far. That's strike two. To Beltre and Sanchez hoping to make him the third out of the inning. Get back in the dugout and let the Tigers bats go back to work. Sanchez working with a 7-3 lead here in the bottom of the fifth. Bounces one in, but Beltre takes. Count even to two and two. Oh. 
and he takes one in the back and obviously Sanchez did not mean to do that. Sanchez usually has real good control but that one right in the back of Adrian Beltre. And uh, Beltre didn't like it too much. And obviously the reaction by Anibal Sanchez is one that's uh, telling all of us you know, that there was no intent there. Beltre is just swinging the bat though Rod so well off of him that he really wanted to try to get inside on him and that one just happened to go a little bit too in, too far inside. Definitely not trying to hit him there but I love the fact that he was trying to get inside on him just wasn't able to do it. Right, let me ask you a question though Craig. Mm -hmm. I mean if, if someone was seven for nine against you. <laughs> and uh, he's already hit two Don't balls. Don't ask me that. <laughs> he's, uh, well, you started it. And he's hit a couple of balls right on the screws. I mean, do you think, I mean, I'm not saying intent, but, I mean, is he trying to knock him off the plate? It's the second Absolutely. time he's gone in there really, really, really hard on on, on, on Bill Trey here tonight. I mean, <laughs> I mean, I'm going inside, baby boy. I'm going inside, and I'm going inside hard. And if I just so happen to hit him, uh, sorry. Pitch number 100 on the night for Sanchez as a roller to Kinsler scoops up, throws to Mickey, and that is it for the Rangers in their half of the fifth inning. Tigers, no damage done in the home half of the fifth. We'll be back with a whole lot more as the sixth inning rolls on from early. Rangers and a pleasure to be joined in the booth alongside Rod Allen by the great Pudge Rodriguez who's looking dapper tonight got a little TV to do later Pudge absolutely yeah, we're there they're already free so today uh, stay for the for the post game uh, after the game Strike delivered there, but I know that Craig Monroe had a great opportunity to talk with you before the game it was like old home week as you guys reunite special moment for Craig. How are things with you in retirement down here in Texas? Well, I'm doing all right, keeping myself busy, you know, working with the Rangers, working with the with the kids in the minor leagues and the catchers in minor leagues and and here. So I think uh, it's good, you know, doing pre and post game, talking baseball. There's nothing better than that. that you go out there and uh, before the game, you know, just talking about what might happen in the game and then talking about what happened in the game after so it's, uh, it's a good job. Craig your buddy's up here your <laughs> mic's open feel free to keep talking to him. What do you have for punch? Come on ta, amigo. <laughs> Yo bien y tú. Todo bien. Todo bien señor. Todo. 
Tú eres el mejor. ¿Es eso Spanglish? No, that's pretty good Spanish. That's good Spanish. No, no. Rod, yo hablando un poquito español, cuidado. Uh -huh. Tú sabes, Pugs. Tú sabes. Sí. Yeah, we, 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 we sabe you Spanish. loco. He speaks pretty good Spanish. He loves to speak it too, Pugs. He has a lot of fun hey, with that. Pugs, I do have a question, though. Who, I want to know who's your fa who was your favorite player to watch growing up. Ask the right. question in Spanish first, Craig. <laughs> huh? In Spanish. In Spanish. We're talking Spanish. No, 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 papi. It's very difficult to say. It's very difficult. Craig, my favorite, my favorite player growing up was Johnny Bench. Was Johnny oh. Bench. So, um, you know, back home, uh, we watch a lot of red Cincinnati Red games. And, mm -hmm. and um, you know, I just start watching him, the things that he do. Uh, behind the play and you know becomes my favorite. But I know you helped out to Alex Avila quite a bit when he was a very young catcher uh, coming up to the big leagues with the Tigers and you do that with all of the young players and I know you don't like to take a lot of credit for that but I've heard uh, that your work with Robinson Chirinos here has been remarkable. Talk about uh, his maturation process and just how well he's been throwing the baseball they're catching. Well first of all you know the the good thing about him and that he he's uh, he was a third baseman, you know, and when you have, you know, when you when you're a third baseman, you really got a got to go hands. And basically when he bring that behind the play and and the work that we did, because, you know, it wasn't it wasn't me. It, it was me. Some 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 I did it. Hector and Benji Molina, you know, Hector Ortiz and Benji Molina, they doing a very good job on him and in blocking, receiving throwing the ball and let me tell you he's he's doing a good job throwing the ball you know yesterday he he threw some two guys out you know the faster uh, runner that they throw he has in the ball club you know they, they threw him out so I think uh, he's doing great you know calling great games uh, 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 right now so he's doing a great job question about Miguel he's in the on deck circle 2003 uh, when he came to the big league with the Florida Martyrs did you think he would be all this and do what he's done in the majors from day one, to be honest with you, from day one, since he got to the ball club, we knew that he's going to be a great hitter. Uh, the way that he that he approached those pitchers, you know, hitting the hitting the ball the other way, because that's how he that's how he came to the league. You know, he he was a guy that stay inside the ball like he's doing right now, uh, hitting the ball the other way. And uh, you know, I remember uh, a, a good moment from him was in the playoff when the. When he faced Roger Clemens, yes. remember that? Then uh, the Roger Clemens threw a fastball right close to his head, and he looking at him. And then the next pitch, he hit an opposite field <laughs> home run. You know, for that age, doing that is amazing. And and look what he's done. You know, he's he's, he's unbelievable. He's the best hitter in baseball to, for me Pudge. personally, and he's great. But Mickey also told me that you're the one that taught him how to hold the bat the way he holds the bat yes. right now, where he does not have. You know, he, he holds his fingers off the barrel right. of the bat. He said you taught him right. that it was, in Florida. He was in Florida. One time we was in the cage, and uh, when he when he came in, when, when they call him up, and uh, he was uh, he was choking up the bat. And I see this kid that he's six three, six four, you know, uh, over two hundred pounds, hitting like that as a miggy. Why we don't work on this? You know, I want to see you in the cage hitting the way you are, and I want to and I want to make a little adjustment on you, see if you like it. So he start hitting, and I see him that he start rolling the ball over, start roll the ball over a little bit to to the left side of the net, and I say, Miggy, why you don't go and put the bat all the way down, and 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 make sure you just completely out and put what the your pinky finger out of the bat. And try that, and put the hands together, mm -hmm. and start to hit like that. So he did it. He uh, he tried in BP, and he told me, "I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it in the game." <laughs> and that game, he went four for four. <laughs> and since that, he just he stayed hitting that way. Speaking of hitting, Pudge, while I got you up here, um, Rudy Jaramillo, longtime Ranger guy, hitting instructor here. How important uh, was Rudy Jaramillo to your career? We'll have Pudge answer that question in just a little bit. He'll stick with us on the bottom half of the six as we take a break here. Uh, you're watching Tigers Baseball here on Fox Sports Detroit. Coming right back at you with Pudge.
Welcome back to Arlington where the Tigers have a 7-3 lead over the Rangers going to the bottom half of the sixth. And here's a reminder to celebrate Independence Day with the Detroit Tigers from June 30th to July 5th. For each game, fans can get an upper box ticket and a Tigers Stars and Strike t-shirt for one low price. Offer available only at Tigers.com slash USA. Pudge Rodriguez, the former Tiger and former Texas Ranger and future Hall of Famer, joining Rod Allen and I in the booth and Craig Monroe down in the dugout. And Craig, you had a question for Pudge before we went to the break. Fire that over again. Well, the question was, I know that Pudge spent a lot of time hitting in the cage with Rudy Jaramillo, who was the hitting instructor here at the Rangers for a very long time. I want to know, Pudge, how important uh, was it for you to have Rudy Jaramillo be your hitting instructor here in Texas? Well, Greg, to me, uh, to me, it was very important because the first thing, uh, the first thing that he teach me was discipline. You know, the, you know, the way to, to approach the game, the way to respect the game, and then, uh, and then we take that as uh, in the hitting part of the game. Uh, you know, uh, when I came up, uh, 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 when I signed when I was 16, I came to this day. I was a, I was a pull hitter. I pull everything, and then, uh, uh, you know, the, the good thing for me was that he was one of my coaches in the minor league so he he started working with me from day one and, and and teach me how to hit the ball through the middle to the other way and stay inside of the ball so that's high and deep and yeah. inside the foul pole gone oh, carlos pena on an 0-1 pitch delivers his first home run as a texas ranger his second hit of the night 7-4 ball game rangers still hanging around that was a good one. That was a good one. He needs that. It's good to see him back. And, you know, I'm very happy for him. He's a great guy. You know, you know, one of the best guys that you can have in the clubhouse in Carlos Peña. So, good for him. But what are the Rangers hoping to get out of Carlos having, re having him signed here lately? Well, you know, we, we know that we need a first baseman. You know, Prince got hurt. And, uh, you know, we've been uh, trying so many different uh, first basemen. And, uh, and believe me, all those guys that... Uh, they played those games, did a great job, but unfortunately they're not a first baseman. So uh, they looking, they was looking around for to try to get a first baseman, and they didn't find anybody. But uh, but we, you know, we find Carlos. We signed him out of the minor league. He went to uh, AAA for six, seven days, and he's here. So you know, yesterday it was uh, it was a tough, tough <laughs> night for him uh, facing Smiley. But uh, but today, you know different ball game for good for him. Plus talk about uh, your relationship with the, the fans of Detroit because they absolutely loved you uh, when you had their uniform on and I know you uh, absolutely love playing for the fans of Detroit and I, and I guess they're going to honor you with a day this year. Right. Is that correct. Yeah I think uh, it's, it's going to be in August. They're going to have uh, a ceremony at the field and I look forward to it but uh, uh, we talked about that earlier mm -hmm. about the fans and in the way that I respect them and the way they they, uh, they they support the team day in and day out. And uh, since I got there, you know, uh, in 2004, uh, they give me a, a very strong support and, 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 and warm welcome through all the four and a half, five years that I was there. And uh, and to me, you know, I miss them a lot. You know, great fans, uh, uh, you know, to see them every day in the field. And uh, I, I cannot thank them enough. For the support that they give me, they give the organization, and they give, uh, you know, the Detroit Tigers for all those many years, including right now, you know, because I, I still watching the games, you know, uh, when I'm at home, I still watch the Detroit games and still, you know, full house and, and it's always nice as a player, it's nice to see a, a, a full house uh, every night and make you come in there uh, to those between, you know, those white line and. And, and play hard every day. So great fans. But as you look back, what do you think your time in Detroit and what you were able to do to help turn that culture around? What do you think that will mean to your long-term legacy as you look back in your time in baseball? Well, you know, I, you know, I play, I, I play, I play a long time. You know, 21 years, and and to me, I, I respect all the organizations that I played. You know, uh, you know, I, I play here for, you know, for 20 years in the big league and. Uh, you know, then I went to the uh, to the Marlins and win there in 2003, uh, and then I went to Detroit. And I tell you, you know, the years that I got there was great. Uh, the Motor City, that's how it, you know, that's how they call it. It's, it's great, very good sport uh, city. They support day in and day out. And I tell you, you know, it's 
it was a blast for me to be there, play there, participate in the World Series uh, in 2006 after two years that I was there, and, uh, and it was awesome. It was well, it was great to have you, that's for sure, Pudge. No doubt about it. An honor to have you here in the booth Thank tonight. You. Thank you Appreciate very much. You. We're going to take Thank a break you. on this wall side pitching change as Sanchez leave the game. We'll be back right after this. Welcome back to Globe Life Park here in Arlington. Anibal Sanchez's night is over after five and a third and 108 pitches. He leaves with a 7-4 ball game, 7-4 lead in the ball game, a man on first. And Rugnet Odor will be the first batter to greet Blaine Hardy as the lefty steps in in relief of Sanchez tonight, Rod. And Hardy's numbers down in the minor leagues pretty good. 2-6 ADRA, 53 strikeouts, only 13 base on balls. He's had a couple of outings at the major league level. And... Uh, he's thrown quite a few strikes, and that's really uh, all Brad Ausmus wants. He wants those relievers, especially the young kids that have been rushed up to the major leagues uh, because of some of the injuries. He wants guys to come up throwing strikes. Sanchez went five and a third tonight, gave up six hits, four runs. The runner on is his responsibility right now. That was his second hit batter of the ball game. Also issued a walk, one wild pitch through his evening here tonight and gave up a homer. He had only hit one batter coming into play today and as you mentioned he had two uh, Texas Rangers. The funny thing about it is Rod you wanted to compare him to Pedro Martinez with that pinpoint control and a number of pitches he could control. Pedro had control and he didn't mind dinging one or two guys along the way either. No, Pedro's mean. There's the line for Annabelle Sanchez, and uh, hopefully that line stays that way. He's responsible for the man on first base. Don't want to see another earned run tagged on to that line. So we'll see what Blaine Hardy can do. He's got a one and one count with one out to Odor in the bottom half of the sixth inning in Arlington. Rod Allen, Craig Monroe along with us. Mario and Pemba back in the hotel here in Arlington. He was ill earlier in the day, wasn't able to make it to the ballpark. So the guys on Fox Sports Detroit asked me if I would fill in tonight. I said absolutely positively because Rod Allen's got my back. Craig Monroe's got my back. We're having a ton of fun here in Arlington, especially with the Tigers up by three here in the sixth. The whole city of Detroit has got your back, Trevor. You think so, Rod? Absolutely. Why wouldn't they? Well, if they don't, they'll let me know. I'll tell you that. <laughs> That's for sure. That's what goes down in the D. 
Let's take a look at our bell time pitch by pitch. Anibal Sanchez. He really hasn't pitched that well in this particular ballpark. One of the few uh, ballparks that has kind of given him issues, but uh, he pitched a pretty good game here today. He fielded one run himself. Also had several strikeouts. The fastball had a lot of late life on it. He threw some good changeups, but give the Texas Rangers some credit. They made an adjustment against Sanchez second time around, and they were able to score at least four runs off of him, possibly five. Well, another point, too, Rod, is a lot of time when pitchers come and they pitch here at the ballpark in Arlington, uh, knowing that it's a hitter's ballpark, they seem to nibble a little bit, try not to make mistakes. And we all know when you try not to make mistakes, that's when you make them. And again, here at the range, they hit well here, uh, so they're going to make you pay. So Blaine Hardy with a strikeout to Odor is now ahead of Leonis Martin with an 0-2 count and two out here in the bottom of the sixth. Well, Sanchez is going to have to rely on the bullpen to come in and, and try to get him out of this. Second strikeout of the inning as Blaine Hardy comes on in relief of Anibal Sanchez and polishes off the That'll Texas fall. Rangers here in the sixth. We go to the seventh. Seven four Tigers coming right back at you. Rangers as they go to the top of the seventh and he'll face Victor Martinez right off the hop and here's a look at the up-to-date Central Division standings with the Tigers coming into tonight with a three-game lead over the Kansas City Royals and Rod you pointed out to me just how quick that KC lead evaporated for them in the Central League. Did Mickey say Gerard Dyson hit home run? <laughs> <laughs> I think he did. Dyson has no power whatsoever. <laughs> But back to Rod, uh, how fast KC was in first and suddenly not in first of the Tigers have surged with this five game winning streak. Well, the Tigers have won uh, six games in a row and the Kansas City Royals, they have lost five of six. So, I mean, that's how quickly it can turn. Just last week, Tigers were a game and a half behind the Kansas City Royals. You guys weren't worried, were you? I wasn't. I wasn't worried. Way too much summer left to be worried.
And when you got Miguel Cabrera in the lineup and Victor Martinez in the lineup, that'll ease some of the worry. There's no doubt about that. Fraser delivers. Miggy takes a cut. Pops that one up on the infield. Drifting back and out of play. One ball, two strikes. How about Pudge Rodriguez? He said as soon as Miguel Cabrera stepped on the big league diamond in 2003, he knew he was going to be the player that he is today. How about he says he gives him one tip and the guy goes up and goes four for four. Mickey told me that uh, Pudge uh, uh, talked to him about how he held the bat and thought that it would be better for Mickey to hold the bat a certain way. Obviously, Pudge knows a little bit of something about hitting it's as like well as catching. Uh, hey, it's funny you guys bring that up. I didn't get a chance to charm in on there, but Pudge did the same thing with me here in Detroit. I actually started to um, hold the bat too with my pinky off a little bit, and I actually felt like I had more pop on my bat. A little bit more whip, Rod. Yeah, they say that it also helps you with your direction. I mean, to pull the bat knob through the strike zone first if you hold it in in that manner. High and tight to Miggy. That'll run the count full. Three balls, two strikes. It's Fraser's on to work the top half of the seventh. Grounder to short. Anders up. Delivers the first, and there goes Miggy for the first out of the top of the seventh. Here are our Nissan drives of the game. The Martinez boys, they went back to back in the fifth. Martinez, Victor, that would be his 20th straightaway center field. And then J.D. Martinez, the first pitch that Tollison threw, the reliever, he homered the opposite way into the Rangers' bullpen. He didn't move off that chair. That ball looked like it might have hit him. He didn't budge. Yeah, that's their bullpen coach, Andy Hawkins, out there. Yes, he's seen a few balls fly into that pen. He knows when he's safe and when he's not. One away as Jason Fraser gets set to work to Victor Martinez. First pitch strike to Victor. High fly ball on the inside of the infield. Played by Carlos Pena, two away. I was sitting down just minding my own business, uh, talking to the boys in the truck, and someone grabbed me, and then I turned around, and it was Pudge Rodriguez. Major props to Pudge Rodriguez, man. I really enjoyed watching him uh, play as a Detroit Tiger. It was a treat to watch that guy play. Sorry guys, I was lucky. I got a chance to sit in the dugout, be on the plane, take the Hall of Famer frame. I mean, I'm sorry, my bad. I'll tell you what, Greg, <laughs> everybody was aboard the Pudge train. That was one of the hottest selling jerseys in the Motor City when Pudge was a Tiger. Of course, Craig Monroe down in the camera well beside the Tigers dugout. I love the plane rides, Trev. The plane rides, sitting on the plane with Pudge. I get to sit right beside him, and I would just pick his brain. I mean, he probably was tired of listening to me talk. Pudge, what do you do in this situation? How are you getting that front foot down so often? Why does the ball seem to stop when you're at the at the plate, and then you put the barrel on it? And he just simply tell me, can I just put in a lot of work? That's all. <laughs> That is the moral of the story for anybody who wants to make it to this level and be successful. It's going to take a whole lot of hard work because this game is not easy. Grounder to short. J.D. Martinez down for the third out of the inning. To the bottom of the seventh we go. And there is a look at the future Hall of Famer and Craig Monroe. Top of the dugout. A couple of Ranger teammates reunited back in Arlington. We'll be back in a moment.
of offense here today. It's been the big boys that have been right in the middle of it. Miguel Cabrera, Victor Martinez, and J.D. Martinez. They did the damage in the first inning. Tigers put a three spot on the board after Rajay Davis and Kinsler set the table, but the Tigers really weren't done there. Uh, Miguel doubles down in the corner again. Torrey Hunter also gets into the act. And goodness, those Martinez boys, once again, they went back to the back. One to center field, one to right center field. And that's where we sit now at the score 7-4 in the Tigers' favor. And Blaine Hardy, first pitch strike to Elvis Andres as Andres leads off the home half of the seventh for the Rangers. They're in a bit of a hole, down 7-4 to the Tigers as this game rolls on here in Arlington tonight. Great night for baseball in the heart of Texas. A little rain earlier on, but it's cleared out. and It's been just a fabulous evening for a ball game. Tigers offense continues to flourish. Tigers starting pitching. Anibal Sanchez did a decent job through six and a third here tonight, five and a third rather here tonight, Rod. You know, he wasn't vintage uh, Sanchez here today, but uh, he has not pitched well in this ballpark. He got off to a nice start first three innings, and the Rangers made an adjustment and did a pretty nice job with runners in the scoring position. But I uh, give Sanchez some credit. He pitched five good innings here. And he's the leader in, uh, in possibly winning this game here so far. Foul ball by Andrews. He's in the hole. One ball, two strikes. To the lefty Blaine Hardy, who came on in relief for Annabelle Sanchez. All the way and Craig what's Hardy looking like down there to you you know what the ball is coming out of his hand really well I like that he's uh, he's attacking the strike zone he's also changing speeds with a good change up eighty nine and away now a full count to the Rangers shortstop every day Al getting the arm loose he could make an appearance here this evening, Rod. Very durable guy, and certainly a guy we could see as this one rolls on here tonight. He's done good work this year. You know, his fastball has been the difference. I mean, the slider was already a really good pitch for him, but they encouraged uh, Albuquerque uh, to throw more fastballs. He has done that. The walk total is way down from last year. And there's a walk for Hardy as Andrus gets on first. Well, as promised earlier in the game, we have the AT&T fan photo of the game. Tweet your photo to hashtag Detroit fan photo for a chance to be shown in an upcoming broadcast brought to you by AT&T. Jenny, nice work. Fan photo here this evening. Love those big cats outside of Comerica Park. It's a wonderful venue. Nice ballpark here in Arlington as well, Rod. Where does it rank on your list of favorite ballparks we travel to? Good hitter spark here. Pitchers don't love it as much. Uh, this is a nice ballpark. I, I wouldn't put this one in my top five, though. I mean, I've got some ballparks that I just absolutely love. I mean, San Francisco, Baltimore, Forge Field is a, a spectacular ballpark. Pittsburgh. Uh, this is a nice yard, very comfortable to come through, but I would not put this one in my top five. Some of those parks we don't get to often enough in the National League. Just fabulous ballparks on the West Coast, down in San Diego, San Francisco. Even PNC will be there in August. Trev, I think that was my favorite. PNC Park. It's beautiful out there. That one. Hardy quick throw over to first, keeping Andrews close. Meanwhile, Chu at the plate, a one and one count on him. Nobody out. Bottom seven. Rangers down by three. Chu takes a second strike after fouling that one off.
And then two numbers actually a little bit better against lefties this year than right hand. 263 against lefties and then 235 against right handers for Chen Su Chu. Ball away, two and two. Craig, you don't get to the ballpark that much, but how valuable is it for you to, uh, when you do get down to the ballpark and then get into the clubhouse and, and get a chance to talk to guys and, and and ask guys what they're doing and what they're working on. Uh, th that's one of the things that I love uh, about coming down there is that I do. These guys feel so comfortable because I played the game and played with a lot of these guys that they feel very comfortable uh, talking to me and, and giving me the information that I need to be better at doing this job. Outstanding fastball here thrown by Hardy. He painted it on the outside black and all uh, Chu could do was watch it go by. And Brad Osmus comes to the mound, takes the baseball away from Blaine Hardy. We'll have a pitching change here in Arlington as Al Albuquerque makes his way to the mound. We'll talk more about Al and the rest of the inning. When we come back, you're watching Tigers baseball here on Fox Sports Detroit. Detroit is brought to you by Arby's. Try Arby's new King's Hawaiian Roast Beef BLT today. And by Bell Tire. Get the lowest tire price, period. Bell Tire. Well, Al Albuquerque takes the mound here at Globe Life Park. As the seventh inning rolls on, he'll face Adrian Beltre with a man on first. And one out. And what's the key for Beltre again? I mean, uh, the key for Albuquerque against a guy like Beltre in this situation right now, Rod? He's got to keep him in the ballpark. You, know, you cannot let him play long ball here and, and get two runs on the board with the runner standing on first base. You got to make some pitches at the bottom of the zone. I hope he hits a ground ball somewhere. One for one against Albuquerque and with a home run. So you're saying he's had some success? A little bit. Phil Coke also getting loose in the Tigers' bullpen and 
Phil seems to have found a little something lately, Rob, and been, been very effective when given the opportunity. Great outing that Saturday night in Cleveland. Getting the save in the 10th inning, his first save since April of last year. Adrian Beltre, since the beginning of the 2012 season, has the best batting average of anybody in baseball against Tigers pitching. And Trev, you bring up a great point about Phil Cope. Now, he struggled early. Brad Osmond stuck with him. And Jeff Jones, the pitching coach, continued uh, to tweak some things with Phil Cope. And now it appears that Cope is pitching with a lot of confidence. Beltre grounds through the hole on the right side of the infield. They will hold up Andrews at third. We've got men on the corners with one out. As Beltre greets Al Albuquerque with a single, he's now two for two lifetime off the Tigers reliever. Now Elvis Andrews took off for second base, and Ian Kinsler was covering the bag. He vacated his position, and he went over to cover the bag, and Beltre hit one right between first and second. Thirty four thousand plus in attendance here at Globe Life Park in Arlington tonight. Cheering their team on knowing it's not over not in a ballpark like this. One swing of the back to tie this thing right now with Alex Rios digging in to face Al Albuquerque. Seven four Tigers. Anibal Sanchez had an early lead in this one. Nice now leadership. the Tigers are trying to preserve it. Nice leadership skills there shown by Holiday. He went out to tell Albuquerque, eh, do not allow Beltre to get the same kind of jump you allowed Elvis Andrews to get. Keep your double play in order. And he also want to remind him too, Rod, make sure that he keeps the ball down because right now, like Trev said, one swing of the bat can change, can tie this game up. Alex Rios has hit into 16 uh, double plays already this year. And there goes Beltre down to second, uncontested. Men at second and third now. Two men in scoring position for the veteran Alex Rios. Albuquerque's got to concentrate a little bit better there. He cannot allow a Beltre to get this kind of jump and walk down the second base. So the Rangers with a little something brewing. Rios ahead of the count, two balls, no strikes. Get something he can handle and out to right left field. There's JD Martinez making the catch. Tagging with Andrews. He comes sliding in head first with the fifth run of the game for the Rangers. Beltre stays positioned at second base. And the Rangers are now within two rods. That's good base running by Andrews for the Tigers. They think that he may have left too soon. Ball hit right on the line. Andrews gets right back to the bag. As soon as that ball gets in the glove of J.D. Martinez, he takes off, so he did not leave uh, too soon. And now up steps Carlos Pena, who has already homered in this ball game. He scored twice so far. The former Tiger would love to do a little damage against his former team in a situation like this. There's the appeal and by the Tigers to third base. And Todd Tishner, the home plate umpire, and he watched it and he said that uh, Elvis did not leave too soon. Java Chamberlain was also in the pen warming up alongside Phil Coke. Here comes Brad Osmus to make a pitching change. And it looks as if he's called on Phil Coke. Morris, the seventh inning rolls on from Arlington. You're watching Tigers baseball on Fox Sports Detroit. We're coming right back.
MLB news and notes for you. The Oakland Athletics will stay at the Coliseum in Oakland for the next 10 years. They signed the lease there. David Price had a nice night last night, Ron. 11 strikeouts, eight and a third innings. First pitcher with 10 or more strikeouts in five straight starts since Johan Santana did it back in 2004. And Devin Mesoraco had homered in five straight games as a catcher for the Reds. Did not homer tonight, but what a feat that is for that youngster behind the plate in Cincy. A lot of rumors out there that David Price might be the first player traded as we approach the trade deadline. I wouldn't be surprised the way he's pitching. Number foul down the first baseline. I'll tell you what, I'd be the first in line to snap that guy up if I had the loot. He <laughs> is effective. Well, he's a free agent, and uh, once he hits the market, I mean, he's going to be in that 200 million price range. So if you do a uh, trade for David Price, you know that the the price tag is going to be very hefty uh, this offseason. If I were to have another son, I'd tie his right hand behind his back. I'd make him throw left handed, and I'd just start counting the loot. <laughs> Those guys can make some money. Phil Coke in for the Tigers in relief of Al Albuquerque. And Pena lines to Miggy at first, and that is that. No further damage done. You're watching Tigers baseball here on Fox Sports Detroit, presented by Bell Tire. A run lead over the Texas Rangers and fans, you may as well make plans to celebrate the 30th anniversary of the 1984 championship season on June 30th when the Tigers battled the Swinging A's at 7.08 p.m. First 20,000 fans received an 84 Tigers replica road jersey for tickets. Uh, call 866-66-TIGER or visit tigers.com. Should be an enjoyable evening to get back together with and some of my former teammates from back in 1984. Rod, you came out of spring training with that team. I was watching that team. They were my favorite team at the time the Tigers were. It just seems like it can't possibly be 30 years ago, can it? Well, don't, you're making me feel a little old now. But it has well, been I'm saying 30, I'm feeling old too, dude. It has been 30 years, and it was awfully fun to watch guys like Lou and Tram and Petrie and Morris and Hernandez and Barbaro Garve and... Herndon and Gibson. I mean, the list goes on. I mean, he has so many guys having great years that year, led by uh, one of the best managers in the game and Sparky Anderson. Neil Cox on for the Rangers, and he induces a grounder to second by Torrey Hunter to get the first out of the eighth inning. And Sparky will be missed at this reunion. He was at the 25-year anniversary of just five years ago, but you know, Sparky's passed away. What's the biggest thing about the game of baseball that you took away from being around Sparky Anderson? Just the way he treated people. 
I mean, he was just a real quality man. And when he walked in a room, he commanded attention. Everyone respected him. People just hung on to every word that Sparky uh, had to say. Nick Castellanos snaps an 0 for 8 skid with a single down the left field line. One aboard for the Tigers with one out here in the top of the eighth inning. And Castellanos has been swinging a lot of first pitches. He timed that one perfectly, Craig, with that high leg kick. And you know more than most uh, how difficult it can be uh, as far as that leg kick is concerned, as far as your timing when you get that front foot down. Well, that's what I thought was happening uh, on yesterday's game. I felt like he was a little bit in between, wasn't getting the front foot down. Missed a couple of pitches early uh, in this game, but that pitch particularly got the front foot down and took a really good swing. Neil Cox delivers ball one to Brian Holiday. Did you bump for many base hits, Craig, when you were in the big leagues? Not in the big leagues, right? I did a lot in the minor leagues. I would always try to catch that third baseman back. Uh, especially when you're known for a guy that hits the ball in the gap, they're not expecting you to bunt. So if you can lay it down on this third baseline, you can get yourself a knock. What's Brian Holiday think? He's got about 125 people here watching him tonight. Oh, he's thinking, man, I sure want to do something while they're up there. <laughs> 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 That's real tough. Yes, sir. What? It's tough when your family comes too because you just feel like there's a lot of pressure on you thinking I, I, I want to do something man because I don't want to get after the game. I don't want to come out and they're going to get on me. Your, your friends, your moms, your dad, they're all going to, they're rooting for you. No, not But mom. they want to see, oh, oh, they, well, Marilyn Monroe would. <laughs> <laughs> she asked me, what you doing? I said, my mom was trying to hit. They got me out. So far tonight, Holiday and Suarez are the only Tigers without a hit against Ranger pitching. So Brian will look to turn that around before this at bat is over. He's got a three and one edge. And Neil Cox as he delivers. Ball four. Two on, one out. As the Tigers roll on here in the eighth. And fans, follow every Detroit Tigers game with MLB.com at bat on your favorite mobile phone or tablet. Get live look ins, instant replays, scores, stats, audio, free MLB.tv game of the day, and more. Download the app at the App Store or visit Tigers.com today. Donnie Kelly in the pinch run at second base. Very versatile player, Donnie Kelly. You can call him in in any situation for anything you need, Rod. Even to take the mound if you need him to every once in a while. Very useful guy to bring in off the bench for Brad Osmus. And he gets a little action here tonight at the top of the eighth. Balls, no strikes to Henio Suarez, who's looking for his first hit of the evening. I'm with Neil Cox. He might just get it right here because he's going to get a good fastball to hit. You see the Tigers in their last six games, 340 clip with runners in the scoring position. And you just might be right, Rod. That one's deep. Over the head of choice, off the top of the wall. Around comes Kelly. He'll score. And in comes. Holiday, he'll be out at the plate. Standing on third is Suarez. Tigers had another run. Unfortunately, they couldn't add two as Holiday was meat at the dish. But a big swing off the bat of Suarez, and you called it. Well, he got himself a fastball on a 2 0 count. He drilled it off the gate. Ball was hit uh, rather sharply. Brian Holiday running from first base. He got a good break. Uh, Dave Clark, third base coach, thought that he could send him home, but uh, he was out by about six, seven feet. Real nice relay from Elvis Andrews, their shortstop, and there was Torino's waiting for Brian Holiday.
So it's 8-5 Tigers, two out here in the top of the ninth. Rajay Davis fouls the first pitch from Cots that he sees off down the right field line. I've been really impressed with the Tigers uh, during this winning streak, the way that they continue to tack on runs. I mean, they just, they score early and they just continue to score throughout the entire game against the starters, the relievers, whether it be Cleveland, whether it be that last day against Kansas City. No one's giving away at bats these days. Rajay Davis lifts one to right field, and there is Alex Rios to haul it in for the third out of the eighth inning. Going to the bottom of the eighth, Tigers up 8-5 over the Rangers. We're coming right back. You're watching Tigers baseball on Sports Detroit. tonight as we head to the bottom of the eighth and Java Chamberlain comes on and to, in relief and Don Kelly stays at third base and here's a reminder folks Saturday is a full day of MLB action beginning with the Rangers heading home to take on the Twins on Fox Sports one then it's baseball night in America on Fox as the Red Sox battle Derek Jeter and the Yankees our MLB doubleheader begins Saturday at 3 30 Eastern on Fox Sports one and continues at 7 p.m. Eastern on Big Fox. Job of on in relief. And Rod, we've certainly seen this guy become very effective for the Tigers as this season rolls on out of the pen. 34 appearances so far this season. And what have you seen from the big right-hander? Well, he took the eighth inning and he ran with it. He has 14 holes. He's been the one that's been responsible uh, getting the ball to job to uh, Joe Nathan. Excuse me. He has not walked very many. He has struck out 35. Majority of Java's uh, strikeouts have come on that curveball or the slider. And Donnie Kelly, who pinch ran for Nick Castellanos, remains in the ballgame and will play third base as we go to the bottom of the eighth here. And Michael Choice facing Java Chamberlain to lead it off. Fouls off the first pitch he sees in an 0-1 hole. Choice looking for his first hit of the night. Chamberlain with other ideas. Deal strike two. There's that curveball that uh, Java's been featuring. He's got a lot of bite to it. A lot of late life on that particular pitch.
Grounder to the hole. Suarez on the backhand. Flip over to the first. Nice arm. Out number one. I like the way that he gets his body set before he even feels the ball on the backhand. And by doing so and by turning the body ever so slightly, very little effort uh, getting that arm slot up after exchange from the glove, making a strong throw across the diamond. Craig, what did you see from Jabba in that first at bat of the inning by choice? You know what? The one thing that I've, I've noticed uh, about Jabba is that he's really attacking the strike zone, throwing a lot of quality pitches, keeping the ball out of the middle of the plate, and changing speeds really well with his breaking ball and his slider. Falls behind a ball, no strikes to Robinson Chirinos. He's reached base every at bat so far this evening. The walk. Hit by a pitch and a single. Chamberlain even Chamberlain throws his first strike. Two and one to Chirinos. Guy in the clubhouse, Jabba Chamberlain as well. He's a good teammate. He has a lot of fun. Always available to us in the media. Comes to the park with a great mood every day. Oh, there's a shot. That one's high. It's deep. Rajay Davis back on the warning track. He's got it beaten. It's in his glove. <laughs> when that ball was hit, I thought that ball was going to land about 10 rows deep. And that was a moonshot, Rod. It doesn't carry as well in that direction as it does over in right center field. Is that correct, Craig? Doesn't carry that way. It'll carry it right center. The Torinos, he killed that. He really did. He took a really good swing there. I don't think Jabba liked that he kind of pimped it a little bit and it didn't get out. It looked like he might have been jarring at it a little bit. Rajay Davis, he's got the speed to go and get it. He hauls it into the wall. Just a long, loud out for Robinson Torinos. Torinos is like, I can't hit a ball any harder <laughs> than that. So two away for Jabba as he faces Odor, number nine hitter in the Texas lineup. A couple of strikeouts in the flyout for him so far this evening, 0 for 3. Fouls one off, he's in an 0 and 2 hole to Jabba. <laughs> he tried to let him know it's just a long fly. Yeah, yeah, he exactly. That. Yeah, run, run. He told him. <laughs> Java, big boy too. I'm not so sure. I want to mess with Java. <laughs> Another guy in that Tigers bullpen you said you don't want to mess with is Phil Coke. No, Phil is a big strong guy. Very strong move. Former wrestler in high school. Pretty good wrestler, he told me. I believe him. I believe him too. He's got that look in his eye. Swing and a miss by Odor. Holiday down to first. Gets past Miggy out into right field. It goes. In comes Torrey to pick it up. Odor keeps it motoring all the way around the third, slides in, he's, the call was out, did Kelly hold on? He's still calling him out. He's still calling him out. We'll see. Here comes Ron Washington and they'll debate. If Kelly holds on, I don't think there's any doubt, Rod, that Odor is out at third. And they'll have a little conference and discuss this one and... What did you see, Rod? Well, the umpires have gotten together without even going to the replay. Uh, after Holiday throws the ball down toward right field, Miggy 
uh, can't get to it. He did not want to reach inside. Odor takes off. Torrey Hunter comes up and gets the baseball and fires a strike to third base. It was a close play, and he would have been out had Don Kelly been able to hold on to it, but Don Kelly not able to hold on to it. Actually, Don Kelly never had it. Great hustle play by Odor, who never really let up on the play at all. He just started motoring around first, didn't hesitate to stop at second at all. Kept him motoring to third, and he's rewarded after what looked to be a strikeout. Turned into a man on third with two out for the Rangers. We're now back at the top of the order. It's with good. Leonis Martin. It's good to see the umpires huddle, though, and one of the other umpires saw what Tim Welke, uh, who made that call initially, did not see. Scored a strikeout with an error to the catcher on the throw, Brian Holliday. Umpires get together, make the right call, and we roll on. Jabba Chamberlain now one ball, no strikes to Leonis Martin, who has a man on third with two outs. Inside, two balls. Job is falling behind. Big swing and a miss by Martin. Two balls, one strike. Chamberlain fires. Toy Hunter has a beat on that, and that is that. No damage done as Adura motors around to third, and that is where he is stranded. 85 Tigers headed to the bottom of the eighth. We'll be right back. Multi-hit nights for Victor and J.D. Martinez who went back-to-back -back with solo shots earlier on tonight. Big night for Ian Kinsler and the team as they come back. And Kinsler leads it off for the Tigers here in the top of the ninth as he faces Cots. Neil Cots, the fourth pitcher of the evening. 
used by the Rangers here this evening. Ian Kings has been hot lately during the six game win streak at batting average back up to 297. A couple of runs scored in tonight's ball game. He's reached base three times so far this evening, looking to make it four. So Tigers could use some insurance runs before heading to the bottom of the ninth. And that one finds a hole. Single to left for Kinsler to lead off the ninth for the Tigers, and they'll take it. Trev Kinsler has really found the center of the baseball. Watching him back in Detroit, backside was kind of dipping, hitting a lot of fly ball out. Looks like now, looks like now he's getting on top of that baseball, getting hit in the center of it, and now he's driving it, hitting line drive. That's the swing that you want to have. Ian told me that uh, he started working on uh, trying to eliminate so many pop-ups and lazy fly balls to the outfield last year uh, with the hitting coach here, Dave Magadan. And he's continued that with Wally Joyner. Uh, when he is not dropping that back shoulder and he is staying through the ball with a strong top hand, he hits more line drives and more ground balls for base hits. So uh, it is huge for him not to drop that back shoulder. Miguel Cabrera, a couple of RBI already this evening, scored a run. Looking to do more damage as Joe Nathan gets set to take the mound for the ninth in search of another save. Hopefully he'll have a couple of extra runs to, to work with Rod as Mickey digs in and looks to face Neil Cox, who is delivering strike two. That's always a good thing. Cabrera in an 0-2 hole, nobody out, one on. Kinsler let off the inning with a single. Miggy fouls it off to stay alive. Let's take a look at the uh, Jimmy John's freaky fast delivery of the game. Miguel Cabrera stepped to the dishes first time up with a runner on third base, flipped one to right field for a sack fly. Second time up, doubling down in the right field corner. Every plate appearance Miguel has had here today was one that told us, and Craig, you brought this up earlier, that he was looking to hit the ball to right field here tonight. Yeah, watching his approach, uh, he just looked like uh, he knew that Saunders couldn't blow anything by him, and he didn't need to be out front. He simply said, let the ball travel, and I'll just take these doubles, sack flies, to, to right field. Very intelligent hitter. And Rod, Craig with his hit in the third inning tonight. Miggy tied Mickey Stanley for 18th all time on the Tigers hit list as he continues to move up the charts as a hitter in the Tigers uniform. Before it's all said and done with the contract that Miguel has to stay in the Tigers uniform for the next decade, uh, there's going to be a whole lot of records that he shatters. <laughs> Hit number 1,243 for Miggy as a Tiger. Koss just got away with one right there. One two pitch, belt high, out over the plate. Miggy just fouling it off. Takes a close pitch there, but it's a ball two and two. I think what you're saying, Craig, is the Cox wants to be real careful right here. That's right. He's set to deliver. Big swing and a miss by Mickey, and that is out number one, and a big out it is for Neil Cox and the Rangers. Well, just like we promised you earlier in the game, it is Miller time, and it is brought to you by Miller Lite. Yeah, the Martinez boys, they've been getting busy lately, really, uh, during the course of this six-game uh, road trip. And really, you can go back the last couple of weeks for J.D. Martinez. He has 
a 14 game hitting streak both he and Victor went back to back here tonight. Fouled off by Victor. Kinsler was trying to swipe a bag, get himself in scoring position. In these situations, Craig, you can't stress uh, enough the importance of getting that runner over into scoring position and hopefully adding on some insurance runs for Joe Nathan as he comes out to save it in the ninth. You know what, Charles? I love the addition of Ian Kinsler, his energy, the way he plays the game. He has the ability to get himself into score position. And right what we talked about early, hitting more ground balls, hitting line drives. Uh, when he gets on base, he, he's a problem uh, for the defense. Kinsler stays put as Victor takes strike two. The one thing that Ian wanted to accomplish this year, and it really started last offseason. He dropped 20 pounds, knowing he was going to go to a, a much bigger ballpark, spacious Comerica Park. He could not uh, simply drop and drive the baseball out to left like he did so much in this particular yard. But by him losing the 20 pounds, he's played every single day. He's much more athletic, and he's stealing more bases this season. Fly ball by Victor. That one's up into center field. Martin camps under it, and that's out number two in the Tigers' half of the ninth. Well, here's the upcoming pitching matchup for the final game of this three-game series presented by Gordon Chevrolet. Rick Porcello will face Nick Martinez. Ricky looking for win number 10 on the year, and certainly if he can keep the ball down in a park like that, that is going to be key for him tomorrow, isn't it, Rod? Uh, Martinez, uh, no doubt, Martinez pitched a pretty good game his last time out. He took the loss in the game, but he had... A really nice start, but you can see he has a problem with base on balls. He's walked 25 this year, 28 strikeouts, and Rick Forcello with his fastball, his curveball, and his changeup has been exceptional, and he always brings that ground ball with him, so uh, he should keep the ball in the ballpark here tomorrow night. for J.D. Martinez, Ian Kinsler standing on first base. Tigers looking for some insurance here in the top of the ninth. They're up 8-5 over the Rangers and the big swing by Martinez fouls that off his foot. Craig Rod, you guys both know that does not feel good. No, it does not. J.D. took a huge swing right here. He has not been swinging the bat but just aggressively taking these huge swings lately and that's why uh, he's been mashing. He's been barreling up everything. His approach has been real, real simple lately. That one looked like it bounced off of both feet. It'll ease the pain if JD can trot around the bases. He's done it once here tonight. As his hot hitting continues. Martinez has 19 home runs on the season. He had 10 home runs down in Toledo in about uh, three weeks' work. That's bank. <laughs> I'd say. Or as Craig would say, that's right. <laughs> Dribbler down the third base line foul ball. JD finds himself in an 0 2 hole. As Neil Kotz is hoping to work his way out of the top of the ninth and get his offense a chance. To get back in this thing and tie it up. They're down two with two out and a man on. Here in the top of the ninth in Texas. Tots fires. JD fouls it off. He still has life.
swing and a miss. J.D. Martinez goes down on strikes, and that ends the Tigers' half of the night. They'll take a three-run lead to the bottom of the ninth here in Arlington. We're coming back. Joe Nathan takes the mound. Baseball on Fox Sports Detroit is brought to you by Comerica Bank, a part of Detroit and the community since 1849. Buy your Metro Detroit Chevy dealers. Visit ChevyDetroit.com and see why Chevy drives the Motor City. By Wallside Windows, the official window company of Fox Sports Detroit, and by AT&T, mobilizing your world. Hey fans, don't forget that Tuesday, July 15th, best baseball's best gather in Minnesota as the captain, Derek Jeter, takes the field in his last All-Star game ever in what promises to be an emotional and unforgettable night. Special coverage begins at 4.30 on Fox Sports 1, followed by the 2014 All-Star game on Fox at 7.30. July 15th, All-Star break right around the corner. Middle of July already. We're creeping up to it, Rod. Here comes Joe Nathan, 15 saves on the season, looking for number 16. Yeah, he put up some pretty good numbers here in two years with the Texas Rangers. Those numbers right now we're looking at are not uh, Joe Nathan-type numbers. Let's hope with some of the adjustments he's made. Uh, the last week or so he could start to get that earned run average down but more importantly every time he gets an opportunity to save a game make sure he saves the game he's fallen behind early to Elvis Andrews who's leading it off for the Rangers in the bottom of the ninth he was the count at one and one with a 91 mile an hour fastball Joe loved his time here in Texas. We talked about that the other day, Rod. Simply loved his teammates, loved the atmosphere and the fan support, and the fact that the Rangers had an opportunity to win. That certainly didn't help. I mean, didn't hurt. It's also one of the reasons why he decided to sign with the Detroit Tigers once it became apparent that uh, the Texas Rangers were not going to offer him a deal as a free agent. He wanted to simply go somewhere where he could contribute and possibly win a world championship, and Detroit uh, provided that for him. Brad Osma says they aren't going to win unless Joe Nathan pitches like Joe Nathan, the Joe Nathan they expected to have when they signed him and took another step in that direction with a, an efficient ninth inning and a save here tonight. Right now the count is even to Elvis Andrews. Two balls, two strikes. Chopper over the head of Nathan, fielded, barehanded by Kinsler, who makes a spectacular play at first base to get the speedy Andrews. One away. This is Joe Nathan's number, 133 appearances as a Texas Ranger with an outstanding save and save opportunities in the ERA, just a shade over two. And Ian Kinsler spent eight years 
in a Texas Rangers uniform and he's showing the fans what they're missing again. He was an all star at second base as a Ranger. In my opinion deserves to be an all star at second base for the Tigers. He has played like an all star that much is for sure. It's going to be some competition there especially if. Uh, Mayor Robinson Cano wins the vote. And Jose he's Altuve running away with that. Well Jose Altuve of the Houston Astros he's going to be on the team. And he plays second base. Altuve came into play today leading the American League in hitting. He had the most hits in the American League and he had the most stolen bases in the American League. So and he's, he's, play, he's playing some good baseball. We'll get a chance to see him. We'll roll on to Houston next. Two balls, one strike to Shin Tzu Chu with one out here in the ninth inning. Joe Nathan on to try to close this thing down for the Tigers. Who are looking to take a second straight game in this three game series from the Rangers. We brought this up last night. Tigers, for whatever reason, a much better team on the road. And then they are at home. They're looking to go 10 games over 500 away from Comerica Park. And get a little payback on the Rangers who took that series away from them at Comerica Park. Where, as you mentioned, Rod, the Tigers have not been as good as they've been on the road so far this season. That'll find some green down the left field line. Two rounds first, headed for second. He'll slide in with a double. And Joe Nathan will have a little work to do the rest of the ninth as the Rangers now have a runner in scoring position. 12th double of the year for Chu. Kind of fought off a breaking ball that kind of crowded him. Didn't hit it right on the barrel, but he fought it off down the left field line. And he saw that J.D. Martinez was shading him in left center field, uh, which told him he could get to uh, second base, which he does with a slide. The ankle definitely feeling better because Chu really ran well there out of the batter's box, stretching that into a double. Now the dangerous Adrian Beltre digs in. He picked up an RBI earlier this evening. Looking for another. The only out yeah, that Adrian Beltre has made in the game as we get a look at uh, the success that Joe Nathan has had against him. And Beltre hit a ball to Suarez his first time up and about knocked him over. It's the only out he's made in the series. And there's a shot looking to find the gap. Rajay Davis cuts it off but it will score a run. Chu comes in to count for the sixth run of the game for the Rangers. And Beltre has himself another RBI as he stands on first base, and this one's not over yet. Seymour, how can this boy beat his high? Well, the, he just has such great balance at the plate, right? Uh, he, again, he tries to drive the ball through the middle, gets himself in a great hitting position, hits against the firm front side. He just continues, continues to get better. He's just, he's a good hitter. He's 35 years old, and it seems like he's getting better. He is getting better. So that's one on one out as Alex Rio steps to the plate to face Nathan. 16 double plays and Rios is grounded into. Number 17 would be absolutely lovely. He has yet to reach base safely this evening although he does have a sack fly. Craig how does a guy like Rios hit into so many double plays and he has good speed. I think what Rios does is he doesn't trust himself for me, Rod. Right? He really rolls over a lot of balls to the shortstop. And when he's really good, he stays inside of it and drives it through the middle. Does he take a big swing that doesn't allow him to get out of the batter's box? A, a lot of guys do. They take big swings, and it, and it takes them a long time to get going towards first base. When you have all of your momentum going towards third, it tells me a couple things. First of all, you pulled off, and that's not always a good sign. And then when you – and it also tells me that – He's not staying through the baseball and allowing his body to stay over the plate. 
One hop to Suarez who tries to get Beltre at second and does. Gets the lead runner two out for the Tigers in the bottom of the ninth. That's a nice job by Ian Kinsler knowing that they weren't going to get two there. So what Kinsler did, he stretched out like a first baseman uh, to make sure that that ball got in his glove as quickly as possible and therefore made it a very easy call for the second base umpire. That's what you do when you know beyond a shadow of a doubt that's not a double play ball. That's a nice job by Ian. So Joe Nathan needs one more out to seal a Tiger victory here in Arlington. But he's going to have to get Carlos Pena in order to do it. And Pena has already hit a home run in this game. He's got a man on first in the form of Alex Rios. What's the key for Joe in this situation right now, Rod? Well, you have to make Carlos Pena use the big part of the ballpark, and that would be left center field to center field where it's 404 out there. You don't want to give him anything up in the strike zone that he could get out in front of to flip into that jet stream into right center field or the short porch and right. And Trev, you also don't want to miss on the inside part of the plate because that's where Carlos Pena does a lot of his damage. Down and in, his happy zone. He can do damage down there. Alex Rios trotted down to second uncontested. So the runner is now in scoring position for Carlos Pena. He's been on base twice tonight, collecting his first two hits, his first home run as a member of the Rangers. He finds himself in an 0-2 hole. Joe Nathan needing just one more strike to seal the deal on his 16th save. Stress this Tigers winning streak to six. One on, two out. 0-2 to Carlos Pena. Who swings and misses, and that's the ball game. Joe Nathan, save number 16, strikes out Carlos Pena to end the ball game, and the Tigers win it. Your final score, 8-6 to six here in Arlington tonight. Rob. Elevated fastball up in that area where Carlos Pena really cannot get to it. He's a low ball hitter. A nice call by Brian Halliday, perfectly executed by Joe Nathan, and the Tigers just keep on rolling. Let's take a look at the big boys, big play of the game, and J.D. Martinez, he now has a 14-game hitting streak. I mean, he's to the point now where when he takes batting practice, you don't even have to turn around to see who's hitting. That's how loud the ball is coming off of J.D. Martinez's bat right now, and he's a big boy play of the game. And Trevor Thompson pinch hit for Mario and Pimba, who was ill today at the hotel, and Trevor Thompson made... His first home run call of his career, and here is the call Sam of the game by Trevor T. There's a drive to center field. That's deep. That would chase Martin back to the wall. Go! Victor Martinez does it again. Solo shot. 6 3 Tigers on Victor's 20th one, of the one, year, one. Rod. And this guy just continues to tear the cover off the baseball. Nice call, Trevor. <laughs> yeah, it was. You nailed it. <laughs> so the Tigers get it done. The final 8 6 over the Rangers. They've now taken the first two of this series, and they'll look for the sweep tomorrow. Craig, a final thought from you on this game. Craig must not uh, be plugged in, but I'll give you some final thoughts. It's nice to come in.